Hello and welcome back to the Metropol Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today we have a deck dive on an atom list. And this is a standard deck, so if you're playing startup, you might be a bit confused at what exactly you're looking at here. This is a runner, but this isn't a criminal, it's not an anarch, and it's definitely not a shaper, so what is this? And this is Adam, which is a mini faction. Here at the top, we're just going to do a bit of storytelling just to kind of lay the groundwork to understand where we are and what Adam looks like in the year 2022. So Adam is a mini faction, and this all started back in 2015 when Fantasy Flight Games released a deluxe expansion called Date and Destiny. For the last years or so, just about every year they'd release a deluxe expansion that focused on one runner faction and one corporation faction inside this box. And this was the last corporation faction, the fourth box to come out, so it's on NBN. But on the runner side, we'd already seen all the factions. Criminal, Shaper, and Anarch had all appeared already in deluxe expansions. So there was always a question in everyone's minds, what's going to show up in this box? And the runner side of this box was actually fascinating. While again, NBN was the corporation side. The runner side was brand new factions. These are the mini factions that exist in the standard format. We have Adam, a Byroid, Apex, an Invasive Predator, and Sunny LeBeau, the world's best mom. And that's what we're doing today. We're playing Adam. And mini factions are really interesting. Um, they are very flavorful. They're a lot of people's favorite decks or favorite identities in the format. And mini factions don't have a huge card pool. Each mini faction has access to about 12 cards, including the identity, so not a lot of options, but technically a lot of options. As you notice here in the bottom right corner, Adam has 25 influence to, to build a deck out of, and you're going to need that influence considering that you don't have enough cards to build a legal deck without them. It's the same for all mini factions, and it allows these decks to be actually quite interesting and still have very powerful cards that are unique to their, to their faction. Now, what does Adam do? Adam's text is actually quite simple. It doesn't give you an active ability. You just start the turn or start the game, excuse me, with three directives installed. They're not part of your deck. You just look at your set aside directives, look at the matchup and decide, okay, these are the directives I want to play. And while I'm making that sound like a decision at the time, back in 2015, it really wasn't because Adam had access to only three directives. These are resources. While you can put them in your deck and there are legal cards for deck building in or outside of Adam, they do cost influence. You started the game with the three of these. And these are uh, directives that kind of mimic Isaac Asimov's laws of robotics. Um, so they were cards that gave you um, drawbacks, but they also give you strengths. They show it as a byroid that you're required to act a certain way, but while within those restrictions, it gave you some benefits. So the first directive is called safety first. It reduces your hand size by two. So you're playing with a three card hand size. There are ways to increase your hand size after that. But as an upside to that, it says if you end your turn and you had less cards in hand than your hand size, you got a free card draw. And that's amazing. Free card draws obviously are very good. However, you have to play the early game with an awkward three card hand. Second directive, always be running. Your first click of turn has to be a run or you have to play a run event. That's a pretty big downside. However, the upside says you can spend two clicks during a run to break a subroutine on a piece of ice. So the idea is that while you're forced to run, you can still deal with some horrible face checks by spending, again, the majority of your turn, which turns out to be quite the downside. And finally, we had neutralize all threats. It says the first time you access a card with a trash cost, you have to trash that card as long as you can afford to. However, whenever you access HQ, as soon as turn one, because again, you start with this, you get to see two cards. So you see the idea here is that you get the free card draw. Hopefully, again, you're running every turn. You're spending maybe most of your turn clicking through ice, but you have immense pressure as soon as turn one. HQ, you run it, you're going to see two cards and they can't really keep you out if you want to click through the ice on HQ and uh, it can snowball. You can get some very early aggression that can um, convert to uh, some easy agenda scores in the early game. Now, these directives were quite strong. Neutralize all threats and, and safety first, I think, were the, the easiest to swallow. However, it was always be running that often was seen as a problem. This was a bit too much of a downside in a lot of games. Being forced to run every turn, there's a lot of turns you don't want to run, let alone if the corporation has iced up every single server, you're now being forced to interact with ice that you had no intention of breaking, and that could be a pretty strong downside. Back in the day, a lot of these Atom decks would go out of their way to play some other Atom cards like Dr. Lovegood, which will allow you to blank one of the directives so you didn't have to run on turns you didn't want to, or even independent thinking. This card was never that popular, but the, the story, the theme here is that Adam raises his hammer and he breaks free, which flavorfully is fantastic. But the idea is that you saw a lot of Adam decks that had this narrative where the Byroid started with these, these directives and had to work a certain way and then eventually broke free and, and had his own uh, intentions. That's really exciting. Now, Adam never really proved to be a very competitive identity. Back in the day, being forced into these directives that had some strong downsides, it just, I don't know, there was always better things to do. But it was about a year later in 2016 when something happened that I don't think anyone really expected. A fourth directive appeared. 
And this was so fantastic for Adam. Not only is this directive find the truth a very powerful card in and outside of Adam, it says whenever you draw a card, you have to show it to the corporation so everyone sees what you're drawing. Again, note taking is legal. But also the first time you make a successful run anywhere, you get a look at the top card of R&D. You don't get to access it, but the idea is that if you ran archives because you have to run, now you can see the top card of R&D and think, oh, I know now I can run R&D and then click through an ice and steal an agenda. Immensely powerful ability for someone who wants to run consistently. Now, this is amazing because finally with four directives, you could sit down against your opponent, you could see their identity and make a decision on what directives you want to play. And while it's cool to have the decision, let me tell you, 95% of the time, you would pick find the truth, you would pick neutralize all threats, and you pick safety first. In short, 95% of the time, you just wouldn't pick always be running because it seemed to be too much of a downside. And that was okay. Even if those were the only three directives outside of always be running, uh, Adam turned out to be very, very quite good. And last year, I think, really showed it. This is a damn good deck. This is the NWE's Adam deck that came fifth and ninth at Worlds last year. NWE is the, the European testing group. Uh, we just did a Reaver Shop deck dive on one of their lists, and this deck was really quite good. It was very flexible, and at the time, the NWE group thought this was one of the best decks you could play in the format. Have access to those powerful directives and then play 25 influence of other cards you can. And you might see here, we run into an issue pretty quickly, these exclamation marks. These are banned cards. Just about three weeks ago, about a month ago now, I guess, um, Brzezeki and Padtap got banned. And these are really important cards for Adam because they're economy cards that are low influence. Brzezeki can be an immense amount of economy for one influence. Again, Adam has 25 influence to spend the same way Padtap is. And it's also very important because these are cards that's easy for Adam to get out of his hand in the early game because again, you only have three hand size and you want to get down to two hand size to get your free card draw. So these are very, very important for Adam. There's a big question mark going into Worlds 2022. Would Adam see play? Again, this is the last Worlds where Adam can see play because Adam will rotate, as will uh, Date and Destiny, sometime next year when not Parhelion comes out, but the set after that. So what can Adam do without Rezeki, without Padtap? Is there an economy engine? What can Adam bring to the table? So Adam's journey at Worlds started here. This is Crown of Servers. It's the team tournament that happened on Friday, the day before the World Standard Tournament. And this is an event where teams of three compete and each player on the team has to play a different faction. It's one of the tournaments where you're most likely to see many factions to some extent just because people are forced to play different things than their teammates. And the idea in Crown of Servers, there's a lot of times that we have teammates that will play kind of niche decks. They'll play kind of themed decks because it's a fun kind of goofy tournament. Here on the left, this is Diogene, a player from my local meta, and Diogene, Jreal, and Asaru, uh, players from my meta, went out of the way to start playing decks that had no breakers in them. Breakerless decks they brought to this uh, event. And breakerless decks I don't think are like too surprising in the, in the year 2022, Endurance is around. There's a lot of ways you can build a deck that can deal with ice. But Julien, known as Asaru Online, decided to play Adam and put, brought back a card that didn't see a lot of play in Adam, Always Be Running. And this was the deck he played. I don't think it had endurance in it. It had always be running and then a bunch of other Adam tricks to let you deal with ice. And you had that early aggression. You could see the top card of the deck when you're running every single turn. And then hopefully you stole some agendas quickly. And I don't know how well Julien did, but he talked to me after the event and he said, you know what? I had a deck planned for Saturday for the standard tournament, but I think I'm just going to play Adam because I thought the Adam deck that I played with no breakers was actually the most fun and probably the better thing that I could bring to the tournament. I thought that was a wild call. I would not play Always Be Running competitively. We'll talk about why there's some reasons why this seems like a really bad card, classically, let alone today. But he did it. He changed his deck a bit. There are now breakers in it, so it's a bit robust. And this is the top placing Adam at Worlds 2022 playing Always Be Running, a card that has been largely discarded for the last five years. He did really well. This is the standings. Julian here, Isaru, uh, is a 37th. I don't know what the standing is, what the points is, but 25th was the break point for tiebreakers. I think we're only about one win apart from Adam on Always Be Running having a chance to make day two to make the top cut, which is absolutely wild and huge congratulations. Isaru had a fantastic run at Worlds, coming third in the startup championship the next day, so really well done. And this is, mind you, now our storytelling is largely done, the deck dive that we're going to talk about today. Now, this deck list will be linked in the description below. This is not exactly the deck list we're going to play today. Uh, Julian did a nice write up here talking about how the deck works and some of the key inclusions. You'll find that link below. There's a really funny section here at the bottom talking about, hey, Andre, if you're going to play this, here are some notes. And in response to this, too, we got some feedback. Sebastian K uh, wrote some feedback here, and Isaru agreed to make some changes. And the list we're going to play today is the, the feedback enacted onto this deck. This should be the more modern version. So it's the obelisk version of this list. 
So here, let me explain you how this deck works and all the cards in it. Again, standard. There's a lot of unknown cards in here because we're in a mini faction. The mini factions are in startup. There's going to be some new stuff for sure. So firstly, we're playing Adam. We're starting with directives. What directives do we start with? Of course, always be running is our directive. The idea here is we have to spend a click every turn running. First click a turn has to be a run, but we can click through some ice. So one subroutine we can click through that generally gets you through one piece of ice. So the idea is in the early game, you can be so aggressive and you're going to be really, really aggressive because you have find the truth. Once you've run HQ and if they res dice, you've clicked through it. You have one click left. Maybe they can't res the ice on R&D and then you know what's on top of R&D. If it's an agenda, you can go get it. Maybe you run archives. Again, you have to run every turn. You see an agenda, go get it. Find the truth gives you so much value. It's so very powerful if you're running every single turn. On top of that, we've neutralized all threats, which again, while we're forced to trash cards that we access if they have a trash cost, the first one a turn we access, this also gives us HQ pressure as soon as turn one. A lot of times, a corporation will start their game with an agenda in hand. Specifically, if they mulligan too, the chance of them having multiple agendas in hand, it, it happens. And so the idea is that you can run turn one. Again, they'll generally install ice, so they have fewer cards in hand, and you'll see usually half their hand. They largely can't stop you because you can click through the ice. And this is the power of neutralize all threats coming together with find the truth and always be running. This is our very aggressive plan. And into the meta, this actually can work out pretty well. So that's what we're starting with. And um, I think we're going to start here with the resources. You notice here in the resources, we're actually running additional copies of always be running. And I think one more copy of find the truth. That's in case things get trashed. Again, there's a lot of resource hate right now in the meta, which makes me a bit apprehensive of playing this list. But the idea is that if the cards get trashed, we have extra copies. And if we lose our always be runnings, it's kind of bad for us because we need this to run most of the time. So we are running backup copies. We have daily casts and Earthrise Hotel. Again, these are just clickless economy cards and card draw cards that kind of go off in the background. And these cards are really important, specifically to make sure we have enough card draw and credits because we're not playing safety first. We're not getting the inherent free Adam card draw. But if we're spending most of our turn, one click to run, two clicks to break through stuff, it's really valuable that we have cards that are giving us value without us spending additional clicks on it, right? Install the daily cast, install the Earthrise Hotel. That'll feed you for the next couple turns. On top of that, we have Logic Bomb. And this card is very, very powerful. It's a five influence Atom cards, one of the best Atom cards. And it just says you can trash this. It's zero to install as a virtual resource. And you can bypass a piece of ice you're currently encountering. You lose all your clicks. Ideally, you do this during your last click. But this is exactly the sort of thing is if we know what's on top of R&D or we know that we can access two cards from HQ, a lot of times this is good. You can just pop this to get through the biggest ice, bypass it, and then smash an agenda off the top of R&D. They can't stop you. It's a very hard card for corporations to interact with. They know you have three. They're usually not coming back, but immensely powerful. Uh, we definitely one of the best things Adams can do. On top of that, very similarly, we're running one Gabali. It's like a really, really toned down logic bomb. This cryptid allows you to break one subroutine, the final subroutine. On most dice, that's usually the subroutine that says end the run. But it's another card that we can install and then use that to help us deal with ice without having to install breakers. Fantastic. We also have three copies of No Free Lunch. This is good because we are playing resources that are very important, so it's nice to be able to dodge tags if we need to. Also, we don't have a strong economy. We're oftentimes forced to trash cards that we access. So sometimes keeping a no free lunch around, easy. it's an easy install if our economy is suffering. But on top of that, if we keep our money offshore onto this card, sometimes we access stuff that we could trash if we crack this, but if we don't crack this, we don't have to trash it. It's, you can offshore your economy, and this is just good enough for Adam. In terms of the icebreakers, we're just on three Mayfly. It's an AI, it's pretty expensive, but a lot of times we are gonna be clicking through stuff and being as aggressive as we can. Again, we wanna close the game off by like turn five, turn six, and we can get enough accesses and enough information for that to pay out. You'll see in the upcoming videos. But this gives you an additional uh, thing to put on the table so you can contest the remote server. If things get really ugly, you do have a way to deal with ice outside of just clicking through it and, and the limited uh, copies you have of Logic Bomb and Gabali. So this is quite good. In terms of the events, again, we're gonna be running every single turn. We have to run at the top, so why not play some run events? Bravado, one of the best run events in the game. It gives you credits at the same time that you're smashing through ice. It gives you more credits if you go through the ice with, again, always be running your logic bomb. This is fantastic. This is a really high influence. Um, whether it's worth the influence is a question, but it's one of the best things you can do in an always be running deck. This is also really fascinating. This is a Carpe Diem. And always be running says you have to spend your first click to make a run or play a run event. And this is the only run event in the game that doesn't require you to run. So you can first click play Carpe Diem, gain your four credits, and then see where the mark is and decide, no thanks, I don't want to run this turn. And that's totally fine. It's really interesting. A lot of times if this runs on archives, you'll run anyways, because again, with Align to Truth, you'll see the top of the R&D. So fantastic. It's, it's a really funny include. Again, two influence might be a lot for this ability, but it's economy and it allows you to deal with the downsides of your directives. Again, we have three dirty laundry. Why not get paid? We have to run every turn. And these are really important cards. Jailbreak is a three of in this list. Again, 
We can have so much pressure as soon as turn one. We can jailbreak HQ and just about guaranteed click through at least one piece of ice on HQ and access three cards with this and neutralize all threats. If there's an agenda in there, we're going to find it. On top of that, smash this into R&D, lock the top of R&D, and you'll see how aggressive this deck wants to be when it cannot be stopped as long as it can click through one ice a turn. And jailbreak is such a good way to convert on that. On top of that, three mad dash. I think I played a version of this deck that didn't have three and I regret it. This card is just so good in the modern meta right now. There's so many corporation decks that are running th uh, six three pointers and this stops you from stealing a third agenda or decks are running global food initiative and a lot of two pointers and this stops you from stealing, uh, having to steal a fourth agenda. You can just steal three and win or steal two and win. It just shaves turns off the game and the ability with Mad Dash, if you can see an agenda off the top of the deck with find the truth, just Mad Dash R&D and you're good. And it generally saves you a couple turns of stealing more agendas. On top of that, Asari was saying, Julian was saying that very confidently, a lot of games, click one, he'll just Mad Dash HQ. And I, you'll see matchups where I wish I had that confidence because that just does connect. If the corporation has been drawing a lot, you're going to access at least two cards on HQ because of your neutralized all threats, just Mad Dash. The deck is a bit cheesy, but it can be very aggressive and that can convert. Mad Dash is so good. We have three overclock. Deck doesn't have a lot of money. Not that we have that many breakers to offset the money into, but this allows you to trash assets. This allows you to deal with upgrades that cost money. This also lets you to steal agendas that cost money. It's a good enough card. It's a run event. And a lot of times you can pay this into the ice or boost uh, traces, stuff like that. It, it's fine. It's not bad. We have a single pinhole threading. It's a good meta card. You can also now run archives, trash something in remote servers, still see the top of the deck to deal with defensive upgrades also, which are really good against central servers when we're trying to run central servers a lot. We have three sure gamble because it's good. And then we have two tread lightly. And this card's pretty wild. For one influence, it's not a card you see a lot. And a lot of times you'll see decks that want to play this for the remote server. The idea is that if they have two ice on the remote server, this still works. It's really good. They often can't res both of their ice expensive, and you're generally good at dealing with one piece of ice by clicking through it with always be running. So tread lightly makes a two ice server or a three ice server not as good as it looks and allows you to get through it with like a single logic bomb and your always be running clicks. But the cool thing about tread lightly is that this is a deck that actually is pretty excited to tread lightly onto central servers. If you ran archives or HQ earlier in the turn and you see there's an agenda on top of R&D, if you don't have a, a, a mad dash, just go ahead and tread lightly central servers. Because a lot of times the corporation won't want to or won't feel like they can afford to res multiple ice on central servers just to stop you from running R&D. It's an awkward situation and a lot of times it just kind of sneaks through one or two ice more than you think it should. And for one influence, one cost, why the heck not? There is one holdover from this deck that's a bit of a mistake when it looks at the hardware. Firstly, Obelisk has been added to this deck. This was one of the suggestions that wasn't played our world. But the idea is that if we're running central servers, accessing two from HQ, accessing two from R&D with Jailbreak, uh, this draws you the cards back. And so the idea is that if we're spending most of our turn clicking through ice just to get some good multi-access, why not get card draw at the same time? It also does have some benefits. If you go tag me, that's kind of a nightmare when all your directives are resources, but it does give you some ability to maybe survive a boom if you get to seven hand size. It's not bad. I think this is the problem here is that we shouldn't have the brain chip. The brain chip was in the original list and it was definitely should be cut. I was meant to cut this when I put the deck together and I think this should just probably be a dream net, which is another really good card at just giving you uh, uh, power and advantage while you're being forced to run first time at return. One thing I want to say real quick, though, in terms of our directive choices, you are going to see some matchups where I choose not to play neutralize all threats. Again, the card that forces you to trash things. And instead, I choose to play safety first. And that's usually against matchups where, you know, there's going to be a lot of assets and you're going to be forced to trash them and it can be a problem. There are a lot of decks out there, cards like uh, NBN controlling the message, corporations that when you go run a remote server are forced on turn one to spend four credits trashing a pad campaign. And then the controlling the message trace gives you a tag. It's really rough. Uh, you can't really afford to do that. These are the sort of matchups where a lot of times it's very obvious why always be running is not a great card, but we're going to go instead keep the always be running to be aggressive, but instead drop the neutralize all threats so that we can at least not be forced to have huge credit swings when we're not expecting them. It's really hard to play against some acid matchups where your money can just disappear. It's worth noting with this card, if you run archives as your first click and there's a card in there with a trash cost, you've now accessed a trashable card. So it turns off this ability for the rest of the turn. I think in a couple of matchups where we are playing safety first, I forget that we're playing this and I forget to get the card draw from it. So apologies for that. Now this is the deck. And let me tell you, it can be quite aggressive. You can see some games that are over on turn two, turn three, just because you can get so many accesses, you can mad dash intelligently, and you can just kind of overwhelm a corporation in the early game before they set up anything wildly too unfair. However, of course, there are a lot of downsides to playing this deck, and there's a lot of things out there that are going to be very difficult for you to deal with. Uh, Saru talks about these in the deck write up. Drago Ivanov is a really hot card right now. And if one of these sticks and then you lose your resource, you lose your directive, you're not really doing anything anymore. Adam ceases to be interesting. And that's again why this list is running three copies of No Free Lunch. 
On top of that, being forced to run every turn and not having a strong economy is difficult with cards like Hard Hitting News being still somewhat prevalent. The idea is that if you run turn one and then you have to trash something like your credit differential is going to be a bit busted and Hard Hitting News finds you pretty quickly. This is just unfortunate. It's hard to play around this. Not a lot you can do. Also, some of the ice in the format now is getting more subroutines just because endurance is everywhere. So spending two clicks to get through one subroutine just doesn't cut it a lot of the time. We're seeing cards like Loki show up, a Fairchild 3 on Cell. Those things are hard to deal with. On top of that, border control is kind of a nightmare. They can keep you out of running important servers. You can double click through this. They can end the run. If you logic bomb through a border control remote server, your turn's over. You lost all your clicks. They border control. You're kind of done. On top of that, really funny, next activation command is seeing more play than it ever has because of the way it interacts with endurance. So you can't use always be running to break subroutines. So this is also really awkward. But despite all of that, despite there being so many bad matchups, there's some really good matchups. And Sports Metal was the most common identity, corp identity in uh, Worlds 2022. And of course, Julian did really well playing this deck. Because so often, and you'll see in this matchups, if they can ice up appropriately, you can just get so many good targeted accesses, information off the top of R&D, that you can close the game off very, very quickly. And you'll see that. However, I was getting frustrated a bit playing this deck. We were winning more than half of our games, but you find yourself often in situations where you're kind of just hoping the top of R&D works out. If a corporation ices up every single server, it's hard for you to get your always be running. It's hard for you to see the top of the deck with find the truth. So I did make some changes to this deck to play a version that's a bit closer to how I would like to play it. Again, this deck seems to be pretty good. And that's this version, always be sailing. Of course, <laughs> endurance is getting played. And I'm just going to talk about the differences really quickly on what we're doing here. Firstly, everything is the same. We're playing the exact same directives. Nothing's changed here. I just wanted to give us a bit of a more of a mid to late game so that if there is ice on every server, we have an ability to interact with the corporation. So on that front, we are running real breakers and we are running endurance, which is again, one of the best ways to deal with ice. We're running every turn to get an endurance counter. Why not play the endurance? Obviously massively powerful. You get this down. If you're running once per turn and you're clicking through stuff, this is another tool in your massive arsenal to deal with ice without having icebreakers to let you get into that HQ to see two cards with the top of R&D when you know it's an agenda. But the biggest card here is Emergent Creativity. One of Adam's most powerful cards, this double costs two credits and allows you to install a program or hardware from your deck. Search and install. That's a massive amount of click compression and allows you to get away with running a single copy of a five influence card. And you're gonna find it in most of your games. Now, also Merchant Creativity allows you to trash programs or hardware from your hand to get a cost reduction. What you trash, you save on the card that you find from your deck. And the idea with this list is we're running three copies of Femme Fatale. So it's very easy for us to have a Femme in the opening hand, a nine credit program, and we discard this with the Emergent Creativity to get our Endurance down for free. Once that's happened, we still have Femme Fatales in the deck and we can discard a Femme Fatale to get another Femme Fatale. And Femme Fatale is a card that on its own is technically a killer, but allows you to bypass one targeted piece of ice that you give the Femme's Kiss to. So allows you again, another toolbox and the way to deal with ice really cheaply without having to result, resort to breakers. And it's nice, it works really well together. I think we saw Endurance and Femme based decks going back in Continental season. In terms of the icebreakers, we are running one Amakua. I didn't get to put this on the table. It technically makes a lot of sense because you're running every turn. Getting the Amakua counters is quite good. My virus is popular. I don't know if this is necessary, but we played it. Three fem for the reason we talked about. We have a single paperclip. This also works really well with Emergent Creativity because if you throw this out to reduce something cost by four, it's fine. That's where you want it. This is a card you can install from your heap while running and it's the cheapest fractor in the game largely. And we want to run every turn. We have to run every turn. Why not save the most we can on, on breaking barriers? We also have a single copy of Unity. Uh, I don't know if this should be in the list. I never installed it. It seems really expensive. Probably a better way to spend two influence than this. Uh, I don't know if you even need to play a decoder, I'll be honest. We have enough ways to deal with ice. Then we have an RNG key. This is our non-breaker program. And I think this card's just underrated. I wanna play more of these. With RNG key, the first time you access HQ or R&D, you name a number. And if the first card you access has that cost or uh, advancement requirement, you either can get three credits or draw two cards. And this card is basically free, free value. If you run R&D before the run is successful, you can look at the top of R&D, the, the server you're just about to access, so you see what the top card of the deck is. So you see what it costs, so you just name that cost, and with RNG key, you just gain three credits or two cards. The idea is if you're spending a click to run, two clicks to get through ice, you might as well get the value off RNG key and it helps you spend, again, three quarters of your turn making a single run, which is massively expensive. On top of that, if you are seeing what the corporation is drawing, if you're all multi-accessing HQ a heck of a lot, you can just guess what this on HQ and it still lands more often than not. You can also guess the cost of upgrades when they're res and you get away with that because you know what they are. Fantastic. Really good card. In terms of the resources, nothing different. We cut a bunch of the extra uh, directives. 
I'm just believing in myself. Hope they're not getting trashed. So far, we've been lucky enough, but we have two copies of no free lunch instead of three. It's a bit of a, a downside. Otherwise, the events are the only thing other different. We're playing two career fairs. Again, our economy is not very strong. We have some three cost cards to install. We have two dream nets now, mind you. So this is a nice way to ensure that on low economy, we can still uh, play our, our nice resources. We have one embezzle. It's a pocket card. I've been loving this card recently. I played 419 at Crown of Servers and I've been embezzling, absolutely having the best time. You see what they draw. So embezzle, you name a card type and then you reveal two cards from HQ when you make a successful HQ run. If they are the named type, can't be agenda, you trash those cards and gain four credits a pop. I just love this card. It's really fun right now. In the modern meta, there's so many HB decks that are just holding operations in hand. Same for NBN decks with tag punishment, Wayland decks with tag punishment. It's really easy to fire this, specifically when you're multi-accessing HQ, so you have a good idea what's in there, let alone seeing what they're drawing with Find the Truth. This card's really fun. Probably not necessary, but I've been enjoying it, especially because you can get it off really, really consistently. We have three Emergent Creativity, as we talked about, three Jailbreak, two Mad Dash in this list. This list should probably be on three Mad Dash, let's be honest. We have two Rejig. This is a really cool card. This allows you to return your endurance. Saying your endurance has no power counters on it, you just unjig it and then rejig it, and then it's refreshed. That's kind of immense. I don't know why people aren't doing this. This is really fun. And on top of that, it allows us to like return a Femme Fatale to hand to install an endurance from hand if we get it later, or reinstall a Femme on a different piece of ice. It gives you a lot of flexibility. I kind of really like this thing. It's really fun with both. Then we have three Sure Gamble, three Overclock, classic fundamentals, and then two Maker's Eye, which of course, we're trying to close the game out pretty quickly. This is an easy, cheesy way to get some good accesses and uh, make sure the game doesn't last too long because we do technically have a shelf life. Our economy is really kind of messed up. It's not very good. But that's the list. I think this is a more robust version if you want to go to the mid game. Again, I think this deck has so many good matchups. It really does. Sports medals, precision designs. It forces them to slow down and ice up centrals a bit more than they want to. And hopefully by then you can get enough quality or quantity of accesses where you can get to a game point, especially if you're running two or three Mad Dash. You get there a fair bit faster. Still, some hard matchups like the other deck. I'm very interested, the more I'm thinking about it, whether you can play an Adam deck that starts again, starts with always be running, because in the mid game, it's kind of a liability. And then you do play cards like independent thinking or love good to turn them off and like break free from your directives. And I want to do more testing to see if that works. But that's kind of what we played this week. Played a lot of games, forgot to record a couple of them, but we have a lot of games coming up. Hopefully you enjoy them. Again, huge shout out to the Montreal crew who's been rocking, always be running and doing really well with it. I'm totally surprised, I'll be honest, it's been working out, but I saw it firsthand. Enjoy the games. All right, we're back from Worlds. We're playing some Adam here in the JNet lobby. Uh, real quick, we got to pick our directives before a mulligan. And this is uh, Isaru's and Diogen both played this list at Worlds. And it's an always be running Adam. There's a lot to go over here. Hopefully I explained it in the part before, but Adam starts the game with three directives and we're gonna pick the directive no one picks. We're gonna pick always be running so we get that run pressure, find the truth so we see the top of R&D, and then we're gonna do neutralize all threats to get some HQ multi-access. And hopefully that's our game plan. So Adam came out with three directives uh, as the mini faction and largely one of the directives always be running was kind of a problem. Uh, for a long time, Adam did see a lot of competitive play because this directive isn't very good. It was actually very restricting and could be kind of damaging. I think we're going to love it. Uh, the idea with this deck is that in a meta with so much sports metal, we can get some easy, cheap accesses. Uh, that early aggression goes pretty far. So we're going to see what kind of issue this is. It's a fun interaction too with Carpe Diem, which is a run event. So as long as we play it, we don't have to run. We're going to just try and get as many cheesy accesses as possible. We're going to be running first click, of course, and we're going to try and close the game out. It's my first time with this deck, so I have no idea how it's going to work out. But uh, Asaru had a lot of success with this. Shout out to Asaru, too, for coming in third at the Startup World Championship. Yeah, normally you play safety first, which says your hand size is reduced by two, but you get free card draw if you're underneath hand size. And those are the three directives that competitive Adam has been playing for like the last couple of years. I'll always be running again. Kind of an issue. It forces you to do things that you don't want to do, especially when they ice up all central servers. But again, a lot of these decks, Asa Group, Sports Metal, they're not icing up everything uh, as soon as uh, turn one. So we'll see how it goes. Now, if we do access a card, we have to trash it. Here, we can always just jailbreak HQ. Did Dark, did Dark Ray mulligan? They mulligan. So there could be an agenda in their mode server, but when we access HQ, we actually see a couple cards. So just jailbreaking in will be nice. We also see the top of R&D, which is pretty good. And we just want to get as many accesses as we can. So I'm going to start by seeing three cards from HQ again. We'll have to trash one of them. We do have economy in our hand. If we do go to low credits, maybe we have to trash like a Tranquility Home Grid. But we do have the no free lunch for credits. We have the Carpe Diem for credits. We're just going to be as aggressive as possible. Double ice. Okay, so it looks like that's probably where the agenda is. So I actually don't really need to jailbreak HQ. I think we can just run HQ normally because we're going to see two cards anyways. And then from there, we can see the top of R&D and hopefully lock that out. So we have to run first click. Let's go HQ. 
Okay, we have to trash the first card we access. Top card in D is a Nico campaign. It's a food, we'll take that. And a seamless, good to know. We can now run server one. I only want to do that if we draw a tread lightly, which makes it very easy for us to contest the remote server and they have to pay a lot of credits. Unfortunately, they can res like a, a Fairchild 3 because we didn't run first click. They have a Nico off the top of the deck. That's worth knowing. I think we could consider getting down our Mayfly and our no free lunch. Maybe actually we wanted to ban dash HQ. It should not be too hard to get a mad dash off, but we'll install these two and then we can draw once. Tread lightly for the remote server is actually really good because there's not much they can res. I think it's a Rashida in the remote server, but they're resing Gatekeeper for six. Um, that's not very good for them. Uh, they're resing Drafter for six. That's pretty bad for them. They can't res Fairchild. I'm just going to tread lightly the remote server. Not a card people play around. Uh, I think it's really strong. We're down to two in this list because this version is a bit different than the one that Asari was playing. This was a suggestion from Sebastian K, but we're running Obelisk. And um, yeah, this is a hard, hard card to play around. I don't think there's any ice in their deck that they can res for less than six credits here. There you go, boarding drill for seven. They get two credits back. It's good to know they have that. That means our Mayfly doesn't go too far, but we just cost them uh, a lot of money. And we'll just get down our no free lunch, I think. Yeah. We actually could get Mayfly down around the remote server. They could seamless launch out here. If they do that, I think we're okay with that. That's fine. Off world office, potentially. There you go. So they have two points. We have two points. We know that card in hand is a Nico campaign. Um, we could consider trashing that. Our money's not that good. We're just going to jailbreak R&D. It might be wrong to jailbreak R&D. You might want to just run archives to see that. Nah, this is fine. Because whether or not we'll get the mad dash is the question. But this is going to lock the top two cards of the deck. So spin doctor, we have to trash that. Border control, good to know. Uh, the Nico in hand is actually worth trashing. What's the trash cost on Nico? Two. So if we trash the Nico, we won't get down to the Earthrise. I think we're going to need some card draw. Now we know they're going to draw a border control. They have the Nico they can put in their remote server. That gives them money. That seems important. I think we can just trash it. This also keeps cards out of the hand. Not that that wouldn't be installed here. So if they draw a border control, there's nowhere it can go. And then we can just do credit. We can't install the, oh, we could do credit, no free lunch, install the Earthrise, yeah, that's fine. We're going to have no money now, which is, you know, not great, but they don't have any agendas that we need money to steal, so this will give us some card draw here. They draw on one unknown, unknown card. We want to force them to res. Okay, so it's maybe a board control. We'll run first click anyways. We can't really trash anything. Earthrise first. Obelisk is good. Our money is pretty bad right now. We're going to need a bravado. <laughs> so we'll run HQ. We want to force a res. If it's a border control, it's totally fine. I don't think we'll double click through it. If it's, if it's not the border control, actually, if it is a border control, maybe we would double click through it. We don't know any of the cards in hand besides the border control. Also, the successful run shows us the top of R&D so we can mad dash and we'd be on game point. That's a border control. I think we'll actually double click through this. So we'll always be running to break the end of the run. They get a credit back and we'll see two cards in hand. If they res that, that must mean there's something good in here. Well, in theory, we could win, right? If there's an agenda on the top of the deck, we steal an agenda here. We just mad dash for the win. Fully operational, okay. There's a food. There's a Rashida. Can't trash that. Would love to have trashed that. But we have to run first click. There's a fully operational on the top so they can play that to recover. You can click for a credit, I think. We need some amount of money. Money's not good. We have the sure gambles, dirty laundries. So we have some stuff we can draw that actually helps us recover. We can also just play Carpe Diem as a run event. We don't have to run. So they draw on the seamless. They draw on unknown. There's a Rashida and Seamless in hand. Sorry, Rashida and Fully Operational in hand and two unknowns. And we can always just run through the border control. You know, if they crack it, I think we're happy. That's probably the Rashida Yahim. Let's see what we draw first. Okay, so we can pinhole the Rashida. We're just going to need a credit for that. So let's Carpe Diem. Hopefully we get R&D. Mark is on Archives. Yeah, we might as well run that. That shows us the top of the deck. There's a Magnet on top. Okay, that's an end of the run. Don't love it. So we're going to pinhole thread server one. We'll pin a whole thread archives accessing server one, excuse me. That's Rashida. Yeah, we'll get that down. So they have a magnet on top. I think we just click for credits. We could show a Mayfly. They're going to have a magnet. That's probably going to go on R&D. Then we just take money out. Maybe we don't have to show they have a break. We have a breaker. Because ideally they res the magnet on centrals and then we can, you know, uh, run server one with the Mayfly. We have overclocks in the list too, three of So we're likely to draw into some more economy here. Draw, draw. So they have Magnet Unknown. So we know Magnet Seamless. We want them to res the Magnet to go down to four. We're just going to be as aggressive as possible. The weird thing is, like, do we run Archives? I think we just Jailbreak here. Like, this forces the res. Just <laughs> it's much silly, like, simple aggression. If they res, there you go, this Magnet. We click through that. We're still going to draw a card, C2, 
and you're gonna lock the top of the deck. They might have agendas in hand. We have to check sooner than later. It's a luminal. No. We mad dashed. Oh, never mind. <laughs> wow, good game. Yeah, tell me about it. I was about to be upset I didn't play the mad dash. Yeah, okay. Uh, there's enough ice that we can just get through if you just try and get as many axes in. The idea is that you're meant to get like 17 axes to have a 50% chance to win. We got a fair few axes. We got more information that's kind of akin to axes. Like seeing the top of the deck is, is super, super, super valuable. But uh, yeah, that's what this deck does. I guess that's the first good game one. Um, absolutely wild. Absolutely wild. Man, always be running. That's really fun. Okay, I get it. I see how this is. All right, this is going to be a much harder matchup. Controlling the message, uh, the credit differentials are going to matter. And when we have to trash their stuff because of neutralize all threats, we're going to have an issue. This is one of the matchups where I don't think you always be running. I'm still going to do it. We also make sure that we're accessing with five credits. But yeah, this is going to be potentially quite hard. I wonder if neutralize all threats is actually wrong. I think neutralize all threats is incorrect. I think we'd want to do safety first. We just can't afford to be forced to trash things with controlling the message. Like if they score an AR enhanced security, we're in a really bad spot. I'm just gonna try these three. Yeah, this is kind of diverging from the plot a bit. Um, I don't think it's a good matchup by any means, but not a very common matchup at world. So we're gonna try something that maybe uh you can see. All right, opening hand. We have the daily cast, dirty laundry. That's good enough economy. We have a no free lunch. If I guess we see the top of the deck and we see that there is a Bologna, we could pop this early. We have to play around hard hitting news, which is quite f difficult. We also can consider keeping the no free lunch to protect ourselves from Drago. But this, yeah, this is uh, as probably as bad as a matchup gets. We're going to keep this hand though. Has more economy than you think there'd be. Unfortunately, we have to run every turn, which means like we're going to have uh, to respect hard hitting news as soon as turn one. I up HQ and they clicked for credit. So if we run server one, we don't have to trash anything. So there's only one trap really in the format, right? They mulliganed. Um, do we dirty laundry R and D or oh, we might as well check server one. Again, we're not forced to trash. We'll see the top of the deck. We'll see like a Rashid or something. It's an Enigma. It's a NAS X. Okay, so a bladder wort list makes a lot of sense here. Uh could they have a hard hitting news? Yes. If we run and this is something that gives us a tag, like a ping, we can't click through it because we have to clear the tag. So if we do this, we go down to five credits. I think that's kind of rough. Uh not the worst rough, but kind of rough. We have an Enigma on the top. We'll draw once. That seems a bit better. That allows us to like not dip to low credits, which is what you don't want to do into hard hitting news. Obviously, this thing's going to be ported, but it's not likely they're going to give us a single tag this turn. And there's something on the table they might. And again, controlling the message says the first time that you trash an installed card, you do trace four for a tag. And we can't really afford that. Uh, so we're going to try and trash as little as possible. Now, all their economy is largely tied into that. That looks like an Enigma in R&D. And we still have to run. So run we will. We see the top of the deck. So we can always click through an Enigma. If we've seen something, it's a spin doctor to draw. It's a Rashida on the top. Okay. I think we can consider running the Rashida. It trashes it. Now with the spin duck on the table, that's not amazing. I think we're going to run HQ here. Because they drew a lot, right? We can steal a Bologna. We'll see if they have hard hitting news. They don't have a lot of money here. We want to force a res. IP block would be, you know, two clicks or three credits. Those are kind of equivalent, honestly, on our board, our board state. Oh, it's a white space. Cool. So it's two clicks worth three credits. It's the same thing as IP block, funny enough. Um, I think it is. Because I don't think we're doing that much with our clicks. I don't think we're going to hit a snare. They can't fire a snare. Yeah, we'll just click through that. So we'll get the loose three because the other one doesn't matter. We'll breach. We'll see two cards. You know, the top of the deck is Rashida. It's probably going to hit the table. There's another Rashida. We can afford to trash that. Oh, we don't get double access. Oh, I totally forgot we don't get double access. Of course we don't get double access. So that HQ run is not amazing. That's Rashida in server three. But yeah, I would love to have more HQ pressure there. I totally forgot. At least we know we can jailbreak in there. And the Nygma R&D will be most of their money. Maybe there's a bladder word on the table, but we might be able to trash server three, uh, trash the Rashida, remove the tag with no free lunch. Okay, that's a bit, they're playing around our stuff a bit better. Okay, so we can always run through HQ for three, for three credits. I think that's fine. We'll be on nine. That's still pretty good. We'd have to deal with the Rashida though. Uh, we'll just let that fire. We're expecting things like Tithe. Turnpike, that's a lot more ice than we expect. Hard eating news, okay. So we trash Rashida, we're going to be down on eight credits. We clear a tag, it's going to be another click with a no free lunch. I think we can afford to do it. We can't let them have a Rashida. So here we either pay four credits or we pay a click. I'm going to pay a click. Now click is worth three credits. Interesting. Actually, wait, hold on. So we spend four credits here, we go down to four. That's obviously pretty bad. We install no free lunch, hit it, we'll be up on seven. The other options, we just put this on crack. It will be on eight. Yeah, that's probably fine. 
It's an enigma out here, likely. We'll draw once. Overclock's really good at trashing assets. Oh, I wish we had that down because then we can actually tra trash the Nasex. Because you want to trash multiple things a turn. We'll just do this and we'll just remove the tag. Again, being tagged is so bad when, you know, all our power is attached to our resources. Also, seeing the top of R&D is not very good with the Spin Doctor on the table. Yeah, this is not going to be easy. We just have to make sure also they don't have a daily business show. But we have Jailbreaks on our deck. We need to draw into those. Their ice seems to be pretty small. Like, we know they have Turnpike, Enigma, probably Ping, White Space. So all that stuff, if we need a Mayfly, it's not going to be too expensive. Issues once they get up to like an F2P or like a toll booth, that's a problem. Yeah, double ice on both centrals. I think this is really, really bad for us. Like we just have to play full control and click for four credits and assume we have more money than them on the remote server. We have to run first click. I wonder if JNet catches you. Bad campaign. That's a bellow now. Now, if we steal that, we go down to five credits, which is obviously pretty bad. So I don't think we do that. If anything, we'd overclock it. That puts us on game point. We have a chance of winning. Yeah, I think that's fine. So I think we just overclock to steal it. We'll be on nine to their six. I think that's pretty fair. I totally forgot where the top of the deck was. <laughs> Definitely something we saw. But yeah, overclock makes this way worse, uh, way less bad for us. Just a one credit steal and a card. And now we're on game point as long as we are able to mad dash the winning at Bologna, which I think this list might actually be on like six three pointers and then two AR enhanced securities. So. Hitting a one pointer is actually really important, or a three pointer is really important with Mad Dash. Uh, if they're running Dragree Mail too, that's easy for us to interact with. I don't know if they're on economic warfare. We can just click for a credit, I guess. That's like the safer bet. We'll be on 12 credits. Again, they could maybe economic warfare into hard hitting. We'll still have six credits, so it's going to be close. They do credit, credit, hard hitting. I think we're fine with this regardless. They can't actually land this. But we have to run every turn, that's the issue. So here it's always better to, not always, but it's usually better to spend the tr trace. The problem is that we can't dirty laundry and we have to run. So they'd be, they could do credit, credit, hardening news. So unfortunately we have to, oh no, we have money, we can dirty laundry. So funny enough, we need it, we can see the top of the deck. This is a really good recovery for us. And this might force a shuffle. Even if we run back, we can force the shuffle, it's a beal. I think we're gonna try and force the shuffle here. Cause they know we know the top of the deck. We actually could have dirty laundry to R&D straight. They have zero credits. It's a chance of them resing resistors pretty low. And this is going to get a spin doctor shuffle. Yeah, we should have just dirty laundry R&D. I don't know why we did archives. They don't have money. Hard hitting news. There you go. Well, good to know. Uh, trashing the Nasex would be good, but we can't float a single tag. We'll just draw once here, click for credit. These are going to be a bit expensive, especially when we have to run every turn. And we know that they have a hard hitting. Yeah, we messed up. We'll run server five again. Price X, the only bad thing. IP block, the pad. Okay, uh, that's the thing we saw on the top of the deck. We'll draw once. We know they're on hard hitting. We'll draw once again and we'll just play some more money and discard into three cards. I totally forgot we're in safety first and we've been drawing. What are we doing? I'm so not used to being on safety first. Huge apologies. Uh, I'm assuming that we weren't on this. So our hand size is three and we shouldn't be drawing that much. We get free card draw. We probably look pretty foolish. Now they can't res two pieces of ice. I do think we'll carpe diem. We're hoping to get archives or R&D. It's archives. That's perfect. So now we see the top of the deck. The psychographics, okay. We have a lot of money. They're pushing for a remote server. I think we just in forward to install this and click for credits. Again, we're gonna play control in the remote server to some extent. We'll get the Earthrise draw, we'll get this draw. I think we want a jailbreak HQ. The chance of them resing two ice. Again, this one we can just go through. Our hand, they we know they have in their hand a psychographics, a hard hitting news, they iced up archives. That's fine. We can just still run server one or server five. It, icing up archives actually doesn't actually do much. Well, Earthrise. Okay. Now we have Obelis. We have to run first click. Do we run server six to force something? I think we might want to consider that. Again, with six credits, they can't raise a toll booth. We'd be happy if they did. It might be okay to tread lightly R&D at some point, but we want to see the top of the deck. AR enhanced, that's a good steal. Oh, it's on top of the deck. This is a spin doctor. If we trash this, we can get the AR enhanced. Otherwise they get the shuffle. Huh. Aaron hands on the top. That puts us on game point. We obviously can't let them score that. We don't trash this. We just tread lightly R&D and they shuffle. I'm okay with that. This is cheaper. We don't get the agenda. We got a shuffle though. And we know they're on Beals too. So the agenda suite actually might be a bit different. This is a good card. People don't expect this. Using this for central folks is really funny. But they can spend six credit an resing an enigma, which kind of turns off the hardening news threat. I wonder if we should have put down the obelisk first. I feel like I'm a bit scared of having too little economy. 
They do res a turnpike. Okay, so they res that for five credits. We lose one. It's either pay five credits here for the tracer or double click through it. Yeah, we're going to double click through it. Now they're going to have three credits. We're going to have 10. And we're not going to get a free card draw. Let's see if this forces a shuffle. I love the fact that they paid five for this. Tread lightly, mind you, makes a run. They pay three more for the ice. Let's see if they just, we force a spin doctor here. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Even if we don't see it, we should trash it. Oh, this is worth trashing. Yeah, it's cheaper to trash that there than on the table. Now they're drawing an unknown, unfortunately, but that's a, a meaner card than I thought they'd be on. Again, we see the top of the deck. We see, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, a Bologna. We just mad dash and win. So we're actually doing okay. We see the green mill we win too. But two spin doctors are out. Those are all the shuffles. This can't be. This is just, you know, throwing credits at each other. So we'll pay five. We need top deck at Dirty Laundry here. Oh, sick. This is unique. Okay, so we'll run server one. I don't know what server seven is. It could be a spin doctor and then we lose this. So we don't want to feel off the top Nasex. Okay, so I think with zero credits, we just jailbreak R&D and we put ourselves on game point. We're going to lose a credit. Again, they played two hardy news, but one got shuffled back. We'll double click this. Getting risky. We'll draw a card here. We'll have to discard a card. Beal. Spin Doctor. The last Spin Doctor would put us down to four credits. We can't let them have that. But won't be on two credits. What's the chance they have another hard hitting news? They have a Psychographics in their hand. We didn't see Market Forces. This is the last Spin Doctor. I'm going to do it and hope they don't have hard hitting news. That obviously might be wrong. Yeah, they have it. Shit. <laughs> okay, we can still win off the top of the deck. So now we're tagged. So we're going to lose our always be running. We probably shouldn't throw out the other one. At least we have a Logic Bomb. Earthrise, Gabali. If we see Nagenda off the top of the deck, we can win. Turnpike, not an agenda. It's a Nasex. We can't steal Bologna. We need more credits. They could boom us if we don't trash one of these. What is Server 7? Probably another pad campaign or a Nasex. It's not a bladder word. They probably would have resed it. They have one pointer, so the Mad Dash could be worth something. I don't want to show the Logic Bomb. We install the Obelisk. We could just go tag me. We could do credit, credit, Obelisk, but then like the turnpike doesn't matter. It just matters for credits, but that's still hard. So if they have the boom, we have to trash both of these. And we haven't seen any influence, I don't think. So there's a chance that we're just dead to boom. Even if we get this down, like our hand size will be technically seven, but we don't have seven cards in hand. I think we just have to hope that they don't have the boom. They didn't draw a lot. They've gone through what? 20 cards? 22 cards? We need Bologna credits. I'm worried if they have self-growth program or market forces. Then, like, installing is bad if they have self-growth program. Ugh. But losing our ABR is going to be the biggest issue. Because then we, like, have very limited breakers. I'll just install this. I hope. No, free lunch. Okay. We get card draw. That's cute. Sorry, this increases our hand size by four. Because we have four tags. So, we can actually run into, like, the turnpike. And I think we know the inmost in R&D is an enigma. So, if we do that last click, it's pretty fine. I wonder if we should also just been slamming centrals. I guess no, because the turnpike is pretty taxing. But the issue is like accessing with five credits is hard. At least we can get this down as like a surprise suddenly burst of three credits. Also, if we get the seven cards in hand, like then boom is not an issue. We know they have psychographics though. So like they could install a Beal and, and score it out. That would still not be great for them. At that point, we probably could consider going to tag me and trashing all their assets. And then they'd have no money. Barring again, market forces, which we don't know if they're on that. But Obelisk is pretty powerful. Um, this was a, a change that was suggested onto the list. This wasn't played at Worlds, and I kind of really like it. This list is running a lot of influence on Bravado. Like, you could play Endurance. Okay, we're losing that. That tracks. So now there's an Enigma and R&D that we can't deal with, barring, like, Logic Bomb. So let's just see if we can win off the top of the deck. Reach server. They, I probably need to try to find the truth, honestly. Sand Sand City Grid. Okay, that's not good. Nasex. They're right. We don't have to run first click anymore, but like we still want to run because we see the top of the deck. Now we're running extra copies to find the truth. So even if this gets trashed, we have one more, but we want to know it's on top of R&D because in theory, we could just like run and win. And that seems, you know, to be pretty good. Uh, I think they don't have the boom now. They're not going to draw into the boom because they're drawing into the Sand Sand. We know Sand Sand Turnpike Psychographics, one face down in archives. Server 7 is not the Spin Doctor. Still don't know what it is. I kind of just want to check. I'm not sure what this is. I think it's another Nasex, right? It's on Mani Sanai. Oh, that also makes sense. So we have seven hand size. We can always draw here. Bravado's good. We need, we're going to need money. So we can install this and just crack it for three. And then next turn, we can Bravado Central, I guess. 
The problem is we got to trash our economy, but the biggest problem is that we, we like the Enigma here is bad. So we have the Mayfly. We can deal with it. The Gabali will deal with it. This is the most powerful card to find the truth. I'm surprised they're leaving this one. This is how we win the game. Mind you, we probably could just be running R&D. So do we want to overclock these? I think we need to overclock for Bologna, so I'm not going to. So run server one. If we see the Bologna on the top of the deck, we just install Logic Bomb and win. P block. Okay. I think it might be an HQ. It might just be an HQ. So we could do Mayfly credit Bravado HQ. Uh, no, then we have no money to break stuff. That seems bad. And again, in hand, they threw out two cards. We run HQ, we also draw cards, which is kind of nice. I think last click we run R&D to force the res. So I think we do credit, credit, bravado, and then they res the Enigma. If that's the case, we want to pressure economy. We do want to take those down. I feel like I'm not playing this correctly. Hum. Yeah, I think we just do credit, credit, bravado, right? This will force the Enigma res, which will slow them down. Like, we just need the, them to have less money. The amount of tags we have does matter. Five tags means they can psychographic out. Uh, five pointer, they could still do it. Or three pointer. We'll take the tag here. Again, that gives us additional hand size. We know they're not drawing a boom. This, they'll have to res Enigma here. That's fine. So we did that last click. So the uh, lose a click subroutine doesn't matter. We get a massive amount of money off the bravado. We're feeling okay. We don't get a free card draw. Here they're going to trash our last directive. And that's annoying. Oh, wow. We probably don't think we can get in there. That's likely the sand sand, right? Let's just try and do everything. With six credits, the worst they could res would be a six credit ice, uh, like an endless Eula. I'm pretty sure this is going to be like an IP block. IP block, we have to break. It, uh, we're our tag, so it does have a hard end to run on it. This is the, the what's it called? This is what we want to see, though. Yeah, it's a sand sand. That makes sense. So that's trash for five. Um, now, next turn, they could go and fast advance this out. It means that we probably want to check HQ, honestly. Uh, that gives us a free card draw. So I think if anything, oh, that's not a jailbreak. How many more jailbreaks do we have? We have two more jailbreaks in the list. We know the top of the deck's a Rashida. So I think we draw once for a jailbreak. That's probably not worth playing. And this, we need 10 credits to go through without spending a Mayfly. I think we're going to do that. But like running HQ here is likely that they have the agenda. We also don't know what's in archives. Rashida off the top. Okay. Again, they have to do some scoring. And while we just have to get lucky off the top of R&D. I don't, I don't know why they're not trashing the safety first. I'll oh, find the truth, excuse me. It's worth noting that they do see the cards we draw, which, you know, might make them, make them feel a bit better about this. But, like, this thing's really important. Resing and Imani. Psychographics. Going to return something to hand. For five. That's a Blona? Or that's a Beal? It's a Green Mill. Okay, cool. That's fine. Trace five to return something to hand. None of our cards cost five, so this is generally pretty okay. Now they're down on one credit. They had it in hand. We had a chance to win there. They returned the Obelisk. That tracks. They install the card in server six. That's a Rashida. So we have to deal, deal with that for sure. So we'll run server six. That shows the top of the deck. We'll just trash a Rashida. We're not going to trash the Sand Sand. They're far away from that being good. Top of the deck is a Bologna. Okay, I think we win. Uh, we don't have to trash this anymore, do we? No, but I don't think it's going to matter. Yeah, I don't know why. They, they definitely needed to trash this. That's going to cost them the game. So we can't get through that and the run. So we're just going to install the logic bomb, click for credit, and go R&D. So this we left fire. We didn't need to do the overclock. We know the blown is five credits, and they can't shuffle anymore. We trashed the last spin doctor, which got us tagged. But uh, so this is logic bomb. Let's just bypass piece ice. Incredibly powerful. Obviously, it's a resource. It also ends our turn. Well, not ends our turn. It loses our click. But that's the one way we can cheat through ice, and we'll take that. Woo! Good game. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't trash that thing. Yeah, I'm not sure whether you're not meant to take that directive that gets us HQ pressure. You saw our HQ pressure. I underestimated one. Oh, yeah, I. Yeah, I think they're realizing in retrospect that's the one that will probably cost them the game because we basically don't have to do anything. With three spin doctors out, we're just waiting for the one agenda to be on the top of R&D. With the Mad Dash in hand, it could even bend the AR enhanced security to the one pointer and we would have won. Because they have no way to shuffle. And we know there, there's only one end there on ice. So it's like either install the Gabali, either install and always be running, which we discarded. That's on us or a Logi Bomb. That's difficult. I wonder if those are the right directives to take. But you see, the ABR is like really hard. And our opponent like forced to hard hitting news over and over again because they knew we had to interact. Luckily, we did have the economy when we needed like the dirty laundry, which is pretty fun.
Hey, you too. Let's do another one. All right, we're playing against Sports Metal. Um, we're going to do our Directive Classic, HQ Pressure, top of the deck, uh, always be running, and we're hoping that this is a good enough matchup. This could be. Actually, Killian, if I'm not mistaken, was playing the region-based, the grid-based deck at Worlds in the first or second round. Am I not mistaken? Which means that this deck is running like Manta Grid, Sansan City Grid, uh, Tranquility, which is a bit of a nightmare. Those are all have high trash costs if we ever collide with them. But we're going to try and get as many axes as we can. Our opening hand, not good. That's a bit better, I think. Best of luck, have fun. I'm pretty sure Killian was playing the Wild Grid deck, right? With like Echo and Wave and stuff like that. It's been a minute. Again, Worlds was just last weekend, and this is the deck that Isaru, Julien, and Daujin were playing. And Isaru ended in uh, first top spot for top Adam. And Adam wasn't very well represented. It wasn't the worst represented, but Adam's quality of deck changed a lot with the Rezeki and Patap band. So these are going to be grids for sure. I wonder if we just like, we have to run first click. I think we just Carpe Diem. No matter what central server we hit, we're hoping for HQ, I think. Did they mulligan? They kept. Okay, so there's probably agendas on the table. Run Archives, yeah, might as well. We see the top of the deck. We've already spent a click on it. Mega Pre-Qualifier. Not the agenda we want to take, but it's the agenda we're going to take. We don't have safety first. No, we don't. Taking the Mega Pre here is a bit rough. It turns on their stuff. I don't know if we steal this one. That's actually probably wrong. Sports Metal, they draw two or gain two. Draw two. So now we can run HQ, and actually we have multi access pressure, because first time each turn you access HQ, we see additional card. Spin Doctor, we have to trash it. Fire Rod Recruit. We don't want to afford to trash that. And then we're just going to play down some more money. Ideally, we should be drawing a bit. An Earthrise Hotel would have been good there. We want to get our jail breaks. We want to get some multi access pressure. I think they can score off the table here, but I think there's going to be Tranquility Home Grids. Yeah, there you go. This is, yeah, classic. Uh, I think this is the deck that I think it is, which is running all the regions. So install there. Gonna gain two credits. That could be the Byroad work crew. We're just trying to win off centrals before the game's over. Can't trash these. We don't have missed bones. We're not good at dealing with assets. We have to run first click. So we're gonna run HQ. Trash the Byroad work crew. And then once we access something with the trash cost, we can check these without being forced to trash the Tranquility. Because Neutralize says that when you access a card with a trash cost, you have to trash it. So if you access a card in archives or another card you don't have to be forced to do that again uh let's run hq server three is probably the uh what's it called uh the manta biotic hyperloop okay not great giardona might be in the list too let's see if they draw two or gain two here did we not see the top of the deck oh it was a biotic on top which they just drew so we don't know the top of the deck i think we want to check some of these one of them is probably the work crew. We didn't access a trashable. We'll hit R&D. Ella Vagao. Okay. Not great. Giving them a lot of value. Oh, Giordano. At least we have the pinhole for the Giordano. They drew again. So we can run HQ for single. We know two of the cards in hand. We know Biotic and um, Seamless. Which with the Seamless on the table, I'm actually pretty scared to check some of these. If we run and it is... No, we still have to trash something. I don't think we can afford to trash something. We trash a Tranquility, it's bad. We'd be forced to trash one of these. I think a Rashida might be possible. This is a bit of a risk. Access the card first here. It's a work crew. We're forced to trash that. We're not trashing the Tranquility anymore. Then we'll draw up ones. Yeah, that's what we want. We can get it down next turn. The work crew means they can't score out with the Biotic, a 4-2, I think you can do. Work crew has some interesting text. Yeah, the good biotic score out of 4-2, but seamless. It looks like it's on the table. I think it's in server three, yeah. Because I think it's on top of the, uh, what's it called? Oh, shit. That's what we should have ran. I think that's on top of the, uh, the one that says if you have less than six credits or no clicks left. We're in HQ. We want to keep our credits low so we're not forced to trash nonsense. Yeah, it made sense that there'd be an agenda on the table. Best Chiraboga. Biotic. Hyperloop. Okay. More money from them. A Mad Dash could matter. They drew two, so top of R&D is now unknown. So server one, question mark. Server three is uh, a grid. Then we just do R&D. You know, a bass in hand. We need to steal the real two-pointers. Those are the good agendas. And we need to get a mad dash soon. Server one could be a spin doctor. Seamless, that's scary. I think we can consider checking server one. We're not going to be forced to trash anything, and then we can no free lunch down our Earthrise. Yeah, this deck is running a lot of regions. Yeah, okay, we, want, we need to get that Spin Doctor trashed. 
just because we saw an agenda off the top of the deck. Putting down a Spin Doctor and Seamus Launch back into your list. Man, we could have been six points. That would have been good. So they have a Bass and a Biotic, so they can score out just about anything. We're not going to trash that. We'll remove this for three credits to get down an Earthrise. We only have one credit, which is fine. It means we can't be forced to trash nonsense. But server three running gets actually pretty difficult um, because of the, uh, the Manta Grid, which is really funny. Manta Grid says if you access this and you have no clicks left or less than six credits, they get an extra click on their turn. So they're probably going to Biotic out here. I reckon they have everything. Tranquility to gain two. There you go. Biotic Labor to gain a click. Advance, advance, advance. If there's a Luminal, I think we're really bad. Oh, I hate to see it. And from this point on, they can close the game pretty easily. We don't have a Stargate. Like, so we have to just top deck a Jailbreak here. A Mad Dash 2 would be good. Yeah, I think it was worth risking the, 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 this thing. That's a Bass, probably. We know they have a Seamless in hand. A Bass, probably, on the table. Ice on R&D, that's fine. And like, at this point, Tread Lightning, it doesn't really change much. Red level. Last click. Draw two cards. They could either install a card here on server three. It'd have to not be an agenda, so we're worried about like Spin Doctor or Rashida. But it's pretty easy for them to score out here with 17 credits. They could also ice up HQ. And we can't deal with two ice in a turn. Well, we could. Sort of. We have to run, click, click. No, we can't logic bomb run back. So they non-agenda in server one. Okay. Earthrise to draw. No run events. Those are really bad draws. Wait, Brain Chip is still in this list? Oh, Brain Chip should not be in this list. There's no way we should be running Brain Chip in Obelisk. That's wrong. We got to change that. Got two axes here. Wave on top. Biotic. Seamless. Okay. Not good. So we know this is not an agenda. Oh, sorry. Server 1 is not an agenda. The Bass, we can't trash it. Oh, this is bad. That's a bass, okay. Tranquility. Can't trash any of those. Just click for credit. Throw it out. Yeah, what is meant to be in the list? It's not meant to be a, a brain chip, that's for sure. What can we get in here? Oh, it's a sand sand. Oh my god, it was a sand sand. That's even worse. Oh, it's a Vlad. Oh. So they can score out a 3-2 here, right? With bass, they can score out anything. All right, Vladisaburisk. They're gonna be on two, four, six points after they fire the Mega Pre. Uh, this is scary with this. It's not Sansan. I think we saw this deck. I think we thought this was Sansan to Vladisaburisk. It's pretty good with the seamless launches. Now again, if we see an agenda off the top of the deck, barring a Spin Doctor, it's a Bass. They res the Bass. We know Server Two is also a Bass. Probably a mistake. I don't know why they're resing the Basses. But now, basically, uh, they win super easily. They don't have a Spin Doctor, though. So if we get him, we needed a Mad Dash. Now, in theory, they could have done this prior to their turn. Like, they could have actually got enough clicks off. I think they can win. Uh, so, hand. This is really hard. We got to get really lucky here. Bioid Work Crew. That's not it. Biotic. Mega Pre. Okay, good steal. They drew two. So I think we just slam HQ over and over again. We don't have a Mad Dash. Yeah, we're just gonna have to get lucky on centrals. It's nothing to do it. We can't deal with the board, that's for sure. Oh. Cool. All right, good game. <laughs> and there's the Giordano, which again would have cost us 3,000 credits to make a successful run. You pinhole thread those, but uh, that's the only upgrade we're really expecting on central servers. All right, credits gained eight. Good enough. I'm a gambling man. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Uh, Dindra Jailbreak, Dindra Mad Dash. Both of those would have been really good. Uh, them scoring at the 4-2 on the table, I think I was too scared. Like, if I didn't know this deck was probably on Manta, I probably would have ran that, which is not good. Can't believe I'm playing around Manta Grid. Yeah, just hit Centrals, okay? This is exactly what Azari was saying. Just hit Centrals. Sometimes you win. Phenomenal. All right, we made some changes to the list. We're playing against Op, which will be fun. Uh, playing against Mara. Funny enough, Mara asked, is there any deck you don't want to play against? And I said, not Drago CTM, or sorry, not Drago NBN. And they changed their deck list, which is really funny. So figuring out what Op this is actually quite difficult. Um, there's a lot of different Ops that tax you out in different ways. So Ben Blum was playing at Worlds with a really interesting list that's similar to Pincel's. Um, at Crown of Servers, I was playing the Bridgman Op, and they all do different things. Some of them have hard-hitting news, some don't. We're still going to do the thing that we want to do, which is win quickly. If you're playing a lot of assets, neutralize all threats is a bit dodgy, but I don't know. Seems okay. I made some changes to this list, mind you. We dropped the bravados, and of course we dropped the brain chip. And now we're running inside jobs and falsifieds instead of the obelisks as well, which I like. I want to know when I can run the remote server. And with border controls, that's actually really hard for us to deal with. So we'll figure out what kind of deck this is.
So yeah, we're playing Always Be Running, which is our directive that, you know, forces us to run, but we can deal with ice. It's really inefficient compared to so many of the other ways in standard format you can deal with ice with a single card. Uh, they're keeping their hand. I like the Jailbreak. It's okay. Mandash is good early. The Overclock helps with, with assets if we need to. Daily Cast for Economy is fine. Final Truth is not great in our hand. We could do worse than this. We could do better than this, though. I'm going to keep it. Again, the deck kind of, I don't know, doesn't have a lot of economy, but the deck actually doesn't use economy well. The biggest use for economy is to install your Earthrise Hotels, trash cards, and um, I guess playing for a Mayfly. Maybe you have to play around hard-hitting news. We'll see how it goes again. We have to get a bit lucky. We're just trying to smash centrals and win. You sometimes blind mad dash HQ. See if there's two installs there. That looks more like Bridgman Op. And Bridgman Op actually does kind of agendas get stuck in HQ. Fortunately, if we run here, we probably don't have a lot of... Uh, did they mull? They capped. So uh, yeah, we can jailbreak HQ. It's these three cards. We have to trash the first one we access. Board control on the top. There's a Sphigator, there goes our money. Above the law, good steal, economic warfare. So this looks like Bridgman Op. We have to keep our money up. Three hard eating news in the list. Falsified, we're gonna call Asset. It's a Maryland campaign, we got our money back. They're gonna res two Marylands. We actually probably wanna overclock these. Economic warfare will drop us, so we wanna spend some amount of our money if we can. So ideally we're gonna daily cast and just hope they don't have hard eating news. But we will take one of these down, because again, this deck only gets money off the table. It doesn't run hedge fund. It doesn't run anything like that. So that gets shuffled. Um, so they're drawing a different card, not the border control we saw, and then we'll install this. So this plays around economic warfare. It's really weak to hard eating news, but they have to have it. And we can ideally win in three agenda steals if we can see the top of the deck if it has a 3-2. Okay, global food nation back into the deck. Ice on R&D. Always be running. One card in HQ. We're gonna run R&D here. We're gonna force a res, or we can just see the top card. That's probably better. Yeah, we'll run archives. We know the economic warfare in hand, so we don't really need to run HQ here. It's a Rashida Yahim. Okay, so let's try and stabilize. Again, this is money. This prevents them from flooding. I kind of want to deal with that. If we click to credits, we're just going to lose it to economic warfare. We know they're not drawing a hard hitting news right away. And this is a card too that trashes itself and gets op value. Op, mind you, gets value when one of their cards is trashed uh, based off of its card text generally. That we need to draw up once here. It's not very good. And just click for a credit. Rashida's taking away. We're going to have to try and trash that too. Sfigator is super important to trash. We got one out so far. So they have a Rashida in hand. We're going to check that on the table if we can. An economic warfare and un two unknown cards. All right, we're running HQ. With only three credits, we will be forced to trash launch campaigns, spin doctors. All that stuff is fine. And if that's a border control, it's actually kind of rough for us. Launch campaign. Food stole it. Azef. Oh, no. <laughs> My sweet, sweet mad dashes. But this is the sort of pressure. That you can put on. We know economic warfare in hand. Our mad dash is now useless. If we mad dashed HQ, we would have won. Probably should have just mad dashed HQ. That's what Julian's been telling me. Just mad dash centrals after they drew up a lot. Especially that turn looked really awkward. Top of the deck is a launch campaign. We don't need to deal with that. We know Rashida's in there. Economic warfare. All right. So we don't want to click their credit because we lose our money. We want to try to do something else with our, with our credits. Uh, this denies the money. They have enough money. I don't think we need to overclock it. If we run R&D and force a res, if it's the one mouseless or the Veritas, it's a bit ugly. We can't click through any subroutines. I think we still run and force them to res here. Like if it's a mouseless, we take a tag, we clear the tag. That's fine. If it's a Veritas, we have a tag. That's an issue. The Veritas is the one of in the list. I think we know this is the boarding troll though. Oh no, they shuffled, right? Yeah, they shuffled the Maryland, so it's not necessarily boarding troll. But the deck has way more barriers than anything else. I just kind of want them to res like an envelopment because the deck doesn't have extract, right? Like it needs to um, res its stuff. It's a launch campaign on the top. We want them to draw. I just want to force them to res. Clicking for credit here is really bad. We'll just draw. We'll just install that. It offshores our economy. This means that now we can actually run into like uh, some of the stuff that gives us tags like mouseless. Single tag is only bad because we have directives and they're really resources. They're really important. The deck also sometimes runs a single copy of best defense. Um, that just happens, it happens. Luckily, we have extra copies in our hand of our directives. We're not clicking to four specifically because economic warfare says lose four credits if able. It's not lose up to four credits as if able. So we click to four, we're gonna lose all our economy if we've run and we have to run. So they drew up a lot. They have a launch campaign in hand, Rashid in hand, economic warfare. I feel like there might be one more we know. Okay, that's probably the Rashida. Well, let's go find out. And then we'll run HQ. Top card of the deck, Marilyn. Okay, there's a Rashida. Makes sense. 
We want to try and spend our money if we can. Because again, economic warfare is in there. There's launch. We'll trash that. Wall to wall. Okay. So we know wall to wall. Economic warfare. Maryland off the top. They're not actually not going to draw the Maryland because of this Maryland. So if we trash this here, they don't get a one coster on the table. The one coster will be a wall to wall or an urban renewal. Urban renewal is an issue for us. So I think we have to trash this even when it has two credits, uh, two credits left on it. Really weird how that is. But we have to deal with this. I don't know if they have hard hitting news yet. But yeah, with op, like just trashing some of the stuff, incidental stuff here is really important. So that's going to shuffle. So it's unknown card. We have zero credits. So very easy to hard hitting news. Uh, I don't know if they have a boom yet, though. So two unknown cards. The deck runs nine ice. That's the first ice. So either we run HQ here, which I think if they ice up HQ, they probably have an agenda in there. And that's probably uh, the... Actually, I don't know what that is anymore. We want to force a res here. Again, envelopment we can't get through. We need a logic bomb. Finally, ice. There's an app share. Okay, well, we're going to click through that for sure. And we can lose two credits. Top of R&D. That's a boom. Okay. So if we see a hard, <laughs> uh, <laughs> classic ABR, Thank you, good game. Yeah, it's always be running. We could have mad dashed, I think. They've been drawing a lot. And this deck actually like has keeps agendas in, in hand. But if they can spam out on the table, you generally can't spend time interacting with HQ before they, you know, push out on the table. This is really difficult. If you draw a bad hand, this capitalizes on really hard. And they drew a fair bit and we deal with the drudge work. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But that's a really funny matchup. Uh, we got 10 agenda points. There's only, you know, there's only 10 more in the list. And this deck generally wants to get an economic advantage, hard hitting news, urban renewals, and then score outs. So they have a lot of work to do. Our changes didn't matter so far. All right, we're back in standard. We're playing Adam. This is my version of the list. So it has endurance, it has a lot of other reasons why running is beneficial. Uh, so it actually has breakers and it can scale into a mid to late game. Uh, I did record a couple games of this. Um, by record, I mean I forgot to hit the record button and uh, played a couple games of this deck already yesterday and went actually pretty well. Um, so we're back at it. We're going to get this uh, on film. It's uh, built to last, which can be pretty fast. Or Sorry, yeah, built to last. Um, so we want to be really aggressive. That lines up actually quite well with our ability to always be running. And again, that's kind of the name of the game here. Always be running. The directive you don't really see for a lot of reasons uh, forces us to run, but we can double click through stuff. Our opening hand, we have pressure on HQ. We have pressure on the maker's eye. None of the other can cards in our hand are amazing. Sure Gamble's nice. Um, Built the Last can be very fast events and very fast. Uh, best of luck, have fun. I think we can consider mulliganing this. This is not the worst. I'd rather have a Jailbreak than a Maker's Eye on turn one, that's for sure. That's pretty similar. So I did spend three influence on Embezzle here. That's fun. Again, we have good information what they're drawing, so that pressure means we can connect with this. Maybe we call uh, whatever their uh, fast advance pieces are, their operations, and that can be quite good. So. Yeah, let's start. Got to run first click. Might as well check server HQ. I'm assuming server one's probably Rashida. Let's just force a res here, hopefully. Maybe they can't res both of these. We're expecting an advanceable ice here, usually. Afshar, Aket. There you go, there's the Aket. So they're going to unfortunately get an advancement, but we can spend two clicks access to from hand. That's pretty good. So we'll double click through the end of the run. They can get an advancement, which is good for them. It's on installed card. Uh, it doesn't have to be an advanceable card, but that could help them. And with one click left, we could either run server one or put down a daily cast. So they're just going to advance that. That's not that big of a deal if we're uh, top of R&D mouseless. That's annoying. Rashida, we have to trash it. Another Rashida. We're going to trash that. So I don't know what server one is. I don't know if that's a Rashida. Let's go find out. Three credits. They can res an ice wall. <laughs> At least here, they can actually still score on an agenda, but it'll be a 3-2 agenda. But um, yeah, it had to be an ice wall there. It could be another Aket, honestly. That would be okay for them. They'd be down on one credit. But server one, if that's a third Rashida, it's pretty wild. So maybe it's an agenda. It's just a wall to wall. So we need to deal with that sooner than later. The advancements get annoying. This gives them a lot of acceleration. So we know they have a mouseless in hand. And I think that's the only thing we know. So they're going to advance the Akat. And if we double click through this, we don't care about the strength. Um, we would love to be able to paperclip through it. But they're going to protect the wall to wall. So we're going to just run R&D here. They're going to advance their stuff up. They might be on very few agendas playing something really slow. Um, we have no idea what the hand is. That's probably the mouseless. So we're just going to run R&D. And set up a bit. Hopefully we have a career fray down. Another mouseless. Not great. Draw up again. They see all the cards that we draw. Here we could do draw once more and play the daily cast. Emergent creativity is really good, actually. We want to hold on to the paper clip if that's the line of play. So I still think we... No, we have the femme. That's fine. Yeah, we'll throw out the femme to get the endurance. Unfortunately, we can't do a first click. Uh, endurance doesn't really do well with mouseless. 
It's okay with that cat, but Endurance is a really good card when we can find it from our deck and install it for free. Now, assuming that's a mouseless on R&D, there I up everything, and now we really have very little of a game plan here because we can't... Oh, it's all good. We can't deal with a lot of their ice really well. So this is a bit of a nightmare. Um, we could double click through this. Again, I think we know most of the cards in their hand. I don't think there's agendas in there. They are drawing a fair bit with wall to wall though. So we might get them there. We have to run first click. We have two credits. I think we'd rather have them res and we can click through the tag. The net damage is pretty bad if they hit anything else besides the uh, creativity. And if we make her's eye here, not that we can steal an SDS drone deployment. We don't know what their agenda suite is. I think we want to run archives. It's not worse res for them. We're pretty sure that's a mouseless. It's another ice wall. That's fine. So this is something we break for one credit eventually. All right, let's just get our boat down. And again, we have rejig in this deck to get the boat down again um, to like refresh the boat, which is pretty good. So we'll do that. Trash that. Get the endurance from our deck for free. And here we probably just need to draw up last click. We uh, obviously want to order your draw, but if we top deck the endurance, we can no longer um, emerge in creativity here. So that's fine to draw last click there, I reckon. Just getting some advancements. Could be a red planet couriers. That's a lot of advancements. They did pay for some of them. But wall to wall taking away, returning it to hand. So they might jam in their remote server. Again, we can double click through this and we can endurance the mouseless. So I think we actually can run server one. Don't know what that is, but I think we want to check it. I don't know what else could be in our remote server, right? Like two Rashidas are out. We might have to play around wake up call um, if we trash something. We could dirty laundry the remote server. This is a mouseless, so we can get them a credit. We can double click through that. I think I'm going to do this just for server one. It means we can't trash anything. So maybe keeping a credit would be good. Oh, it's Miss Fingo. That's a bit of a surprise. Oh, that's really annoying. Our dirty laundry just got stuffed there. This thing has three in the run subroutines. It gets a counter when it's rezzed. Oh, that sucks. That's really, really bad. I thought that was the mouseless. So it looks like this is the mouseless and they have a mouseless in hand. That's no good. Now, the more often we go through the outcat, the more advanced was again Miss Fingo. Miss Fingo is one of the ice that's like really well suited to deal with uh, endurance. I think we can run R&D here, though. I don't know if we want to make her's eye. We'll run R&D. It gets a charge. They can't res it if it's the mouseless. Find the truth. Top of R&D, it's a wall to wall. Can't trash that, we can't afford it. Um, okay. So we know they're gonna draw a wall to wall. We know they have another wall to wall in hand, so we can set up uh, an embezzle next turn. We just don't wanna do it this turn so they get um, a net cat counter, that'd be pretty bad. We're just gonna need some money here. The coder's not very necessary. So we know they're gonna have two wall to walls in hand in the mouse list. So hopefully they score an agenda out here, like just an atlas or whatever, and then we can go hit the embezzle on HQ. And embezzle, we name it card type, and then we access, you know, two cards. We don't actually access them. And they're going to play it a bit slow. So this does look like an agenda. Can we deal with this? We need economy. So I think we can deal with this. We just need embezzle to hit and get a lot of money. So I think we know there's a mouseless and two wall to walls. I'm going to go for the wall to wall. So we're going to go HQ. We have to run first click. I'm going to double click through this. Or no, I'll both through this. We need our clicks this turn. So break the end of the run. Again, this is now five strength because it's triple advanced. And we can't break both the subroutines. So they get a credit and advancement. I can help them score out the agenda here. Again, if it's an SDS drone deployment, it's really awkward for us to interact with it. We're going to name Acid here because we know there's two. See the top of the deck first, I guess? It's a wall to wall. That's all the wall to walls. So we name Acid. We hit a wall to wall and the mouseless. Okay, so we trashed one of them. We got six credits. To break this, we have to install for four. We have to install for four. And then we have to break for three. So it's seven. So we could do credit run. We should just do credit, credit run and keep our bow counters. This could be an NGO front. That'd be pretty bad. I think I did the math right here. So this is three credits. And this is one credit. Then we get to keep our vote counters, which is nice. Could be an SDS. We can always trash the paperclip. It's an Atlas the counter. Nice. All right, we'll take it. No NGO. So it's probably next going to be in their most of wall to wall. We know they have two wall to walls in hand and a mouse list. They're triple advancing this mouse list. So now the subroutines on mouse list are pretty mean if they're triple advanced. And this is the sort of play they have to do. Uh, here we have to run so we can run archives, pay a credit to get endurance counter, see the top of the deck. It's pretty good. And that's likely the wall to wall. I think if anything, we're going to win off the maker's eye sooner and later. Uh, we need to start drawing, though. We have mad dashes and stuff in our deck. Our economy is also pretty bad here. But the top of R&D is something we can always get to. And geo front. OK, unfortunate. Drop. This emerging creativity can get us a femme fatale, which is the easiest way for us to deal with this endurance here um, by a mile. Uh, sorry, with this mouseless here. No free lunch. That's one of the best econ cards we can play on zero credits. We're not going to need this for the tag so much. And there's the wall to wall. So they're drawing unknown cards here because wall to wall allows them as long as they have one asset to, to draw even further. 
Um, and this is a hard matchup where they want to ice up everything and they're a bit slower. Like this is the sort of matchups that can be quite difficult. That's the NGO friend, very likely. Iced up. They have four credits here. So this is awkward. Like if we run HQ, we know that they have wall to wall in hand, wall to wall in hand. So if anything, I think we force them to res the mouseless, which will cost them uh, only one credit. We can also pop the no free lunch and maker's eye blindly. I honestly don't think that's the worst. Otherwise, we're going to need our money for the merge and creativity to get the fem down, which is expensive. We're going to have to draw another fem, I think. Uh, Unity doesn't deal with mouseless really well. Mouseless is really hard to deal with. Again, free subroutines. Most of them are pretty impactful. This remote server we can get through, but we're pretty sure that's the NGO front. Again, they know we can run this. Yeah, let's just run R&D. I don't think we're going to Maker's Eye here. I think we need to get the fem down sooner than anything. Yeah, it's a mouseless. So it has triple advanced. They paid a lot of money for this. So it's Corp gains three threat credits, three net damage, give the runner a tag, and end the run. So we can boat through all of that. And I think boating through all that actually might be okay here. Because I want them to have no money, and we have a rejig in hand. So we're going to boat through all of that. You don't see that a lot. This is mean. Now the NGO front means they will recover. Another NGO front. We can trash that one, I guess. I don't know if we should. Oh, we have to. It's not even our choice, so don't have to consider that. So now it's an unknown on top of R&D. We know in hand, this is probably the mouseless here. Uh, we might want to rejig. With NGO front, they have eight credits, so they can res this mouseless. Uh, we need something. Earthrise Hotel is pretty good. I think we just want to rejig this endurance. We probably want to do that once it's empty, though. Ugh. Credit, credit. Again, if we want to find a fem, if we don't discard a lot of stuff, it's going to be 11 credits. So we need to find, uh, there's two more fems in 32, not a lot. Our card draw is pretty bad. We need a dream net on the table. There you go. It's NGO front. This could easily be the wall to wall. We have to run first click. They have eight credits. So maybe we run archives. If there is a mouseless here. It's like not the best for them. Okay. It's thinking. So we could double click through some of this. The tag we can clear clicklessly. So that's pretty good. Them getting a credit doesn't really matter. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think we can double consider double clicking through uh, the Nah, we can fire this one net damage. If it hits like the rejig, we're upset. If it hits emergent creativity, we're upset. I don't think we're going to install the unity in this matchup. Yeah, that's fine. We're not going to afford that. So we break this for one. We see the top of the deck. And we have two endurance counters. Again, so much of this is just getting lucky at the top of R&D. Show me an agenda, please. Atlas, sick. Okay, so we know there's an Atlas on top, which means we can run through the mouseless and give them three credits. We need to clear the tag. Again, floating tags is not that I'm expecting tag punishment, but we lose these, we kind of lose the game. So that's not great. So I think we consider just running R&D. We can click through a couple of these. They can get three credits. That's probably wall to wall in their mode server. I think we need to do that. If that's the case, can we draw up once? For Mad Dash, would be nice. Okay. We can't get that off, can we? Not this turn. We need to hit R&D here. So we'll break the tag and the net damage actually is probably the easiest one. Oh, it's three net damage. Never mind. So then you have $3. Pretty good. We get the Atlas. So we're on game point as long as we can mad dash. So I think it's either if we pop this thinking. So either we can pop this and click for credit. We end on two or we can gain three and clear a tag. So we're end up on two. So it doesn't really matter how we do this. We'll remove the tag and just click for credit. Again, we have to run every turn. This is where it gets really awkward once they like. Ice up everything. Oh, it's Rashida. Okay, that broke through R&D lock. So now running HQ is pretty good because they drew a lot. Now they have 11 credits, so they're likely to be able to res on HQ on the outermost. And that could be a wall-to-wall, -wall, could easily be an agenda, but I don't think we want to run their remote server until we mad dash. So here we have to run. I'm going to run HQ. Again, they drew a lot, so the chance of them drawing multiple agendas is pretty high. Fortunately, we have no bow counters, but this is the turn where like we will rejig this. Oh, God. Third mouseless in the top 20. Okay. Uh, this is really annoying. I think spending two clicks instead of removing the tag is okay because it's a click to remove the tag and a click for two credits, which is kind of where our economy is. Yeah, I'll double click through that. Oh, but then we're not clicking through this. I don't think we can float the tag. Man, triple mouse is pretty bad. Lost the unity, that's fine. So here we probably jack out. Again, we can't really interact with this. And then we'll just rejig this thing. So we just refresh our endurance. So now we can get some HQ pressure. If they do score out here, it's a wall to wall. So I don't think they had agendas in hand. Maybe they do and they just don't feel good about this remote server. But now it's like really hard for us to get a successful run. There's a chance of running our uh, archives or sorry, server one is the easiest remote server to run right now. It's just money. But yeah, I think if we have to run, we just bounce off of this and just lose a click. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense. I don't know if they're on border control. The fact that they advance us means probably not. 
border control. So we'll just run server three or server one, excuse me. It's a three there. We'll check out. We gotta run. Sometimes this is what it looks like. Click for three. Okay, we gotta draw at some point too. Again, we don't have a really robust economy. We're hoping to win off of like a maker's eye. Ideally, we draw into a mad dash and mad dash R&D once we see something on the top of the deck. The question is, can we spend, you know, four credits to run server one to get a bow counter? We're also forced to trash the wall to wall, which is really annoying. Yeah, they're, they're fixing it. So, yeah, we're going to force an issue somewhere. Okay, they uh, advanced this. Actually, did they advance that with the wall to wall? No. So this is no longer a border control. So I don't know what we're worried about. Like, we've seen the mouselesses. If it's a Hortum, it's fine. If it's a nice wall, it's fine. If it's a Masvingo, it's fine. So I think we run R&D here. Again, we have to run first click. We're just hoping this is something we don't have to double click through. And a Colossus would be annoying. But yeah, this like sort of mass glacier, we're just slamming stuff, things on the table. Ah, oh, man, Colossus. Give the runner a tag, trash one installed program. Okay, so the program is worth more to us than the tag, funny enough. We can double boat through this. They did spend money on this again, but they're just playing full glacier. I think we can't double click through this. I think we have to uh, boat. The boat deals with both of these. And we'll jack out after. So we can draw up here. We have the mad dash, so if we ever see the top of the deck, we can win. Again, how to get our axes is that's a bigger issue. We have to play that before we play the earth rise. Uh, but we definitely want to fem something here. Like we could fem the aket. I think the problem is like we have to fem mouse eyes. But we might have to be able to we might be able to just play control on the remote server. That's probably spin doctor. We just run that. Oh, and hostile. Okay, so we have bad publicity. That helps. That actually does help with us a fair bit. All right, we gotta run. Run server one. Got bad pub. It's a border control. Oh, so they do have border controls. Okay, so here with bad publicity, like this actually changes this a lot because now we can just bounce off of this instead of giving them three credits. The question is, do we want to make a successful run to see the top of R&D? Again, we know this is not a border control. So if we ever see the agenda, we can win. But yeah, the bad pub here is actually pretty impactful with the border control. Now that makes that remote server a bit better for them for sure. But we need to draw a fem because I don't think we can afford the merge and creativity any other way. This is probably slow enough. Let's draw once for a career fair. Uh, uh, dirty laundry is going to be hard to play again. You don't generally see this much ice on a table. This is not going to be an easy matchup. A lot of times running our guys is easy enough. I wonder if we just throw a maker's eye out. Triple ice on R&D or triple advance. Another triple advance, like just dirtling. This is where like playing, you know, actual economy engines at scale over, t uh, over time uh, can be, you know, pretty good. We have to run here. So we'll just run server one. Hey, bad pub. And at some point we're going to run HQ because they've been drawing a lot. They've been drawing with the wall to wall. There actually might be agendas face down in archives. So we're just a three click runner right now. I do think we need to run HQ. And I think if anything, we might like checking archives seems to be important. I think mad dashing HQ has a chance of, of converting. Uh, I do think we need to run this soon enough. Our boat being on one counter is like really obnoxious. I don't know what we're drawing into. Like we're trying to draw into, I think, um, into a fem which we're going to try and emerge in creativity out for free or for two credits and two clicks. But once we fem this, we're in an okay spot. Yeah, we need our boat to be on more counters. That's for sure. Maybe we need three rejig in this deck. I don't know. This is expensive, but we need the card draw. Let's see if they put a fourth ice on their remote server. Again, their remote server being only barriers is like the one thing that we can more easily break. Ice wall. Okay, cool. Draw, draw, returning. So now they might be jamming here. And again, I think here we have to go HQ. So what of this can we break? We have to double click through that. We have to take three net damage and we have to give them three credits. So I think we just mad dash HQ probably. So we'll do earth rise first. Oh, logic bomb, of course. A single advance there. So could easily be the Atlas. Now we have to run. This is where I'm really happy that that uh, what mass comms is banned. Um, okay, so if we want to get the logic bomb down, I think the turtle is like probably not good enough. The low strength ice in this deck seems to be the barriers, and we're already kind of set for that. So I don't think we need that. But we need to run something. We can't get the logic bomb down first click. We could consider mad dashing HQ here, right? And then we uh, double click through the tag. We take three net damage. They gain three credits, and then we break that. I think that's fine. There's a chance that we win off of that. It's pretty high risk, obviously. But they've drawn a lot. They only have 10 cards left in RD. I do think there's cards in archives, but I think this has a chance of converting. So I'm just going to go for it. We're hoping to keep the logic bomb in this hand. So here we're going to. Double click through the end of the run. So they're going to get three credits and do three net damage. Again, we can take four net damage on this run. Okay, we lost the logic bomb. That's the worst thing to lose. This we're going to break. Again, they'll get an advancement. So we can only break one of the subroutines. Regardless, it costs us four, which is pretty expensive. It's only three with the bad pub. 
We're hoping to win here. We can steal SDS drone deployment. Any other agenda besides hostile wins. Come on. Top of the deck. NGO front. Uh-oh. Red Planet Couriers. Classic. Too big to fail. Shit. At least we didn't have to trash that. <laughs> All right. I think it's actually in archives. I think it's likely the game's in archives. Maybe they're hoping that we die to punitive. But if it is a food in archives, we need another mad dash. So that didn't work out for us. We'll draw up. Dreamnet. They didn't advance this, which is pretty surprising. And we know they have an NGO in hand. But Red Planet Couriers means that they can score out uh, like a 5-3 uh, from hand if they do Biotic into Red Planet Couriers. We got bow counters though, so... Oh, Trick of Light. Cool, that tracks. I think we just check archives here. Yeah, there's a food, okay. So the 44 card minimum deck. Let's do our triggers first. Sometimes you actually don't want to Earthrise first, you want to run first because you could take damage. With a 44 card deck, they're playing 18 agenda points, right? 18 to 19. So they're on three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's 10 more agenda points between these nine cards, five here and then six down, face down. We know the hand has an NGO front, a red planet couriers and a too big to fail. So we know most of HQ. So actually it's either the top of R&D or archives. I think here we can double click or we can double through the mouse list and then just pay credits to go through archives. So I think we just run archives. I think we dirty laundry archives. Yeah, I think we dirty laundry archives. The only problem is like we have one more mad dash in the list. And if we run archives and only steal one agenda, then like, well, we have to run, right? Yeah, it's pretty ugly if we don't steal two agendas here. This will both through it. Uh, we don't want to take the three net damage. Logic bomb is really important. It's not very good for border control, but it means that we can like run R&D potentially this turn. If we see an agenda off the top and this doesn't win, this is free. Bad pub. Find the truth. Top of R&D. Above the law. So there's an agenda there. No agendas here, though. Three of virus. Yeah, I guess because they're full fast events, huh? <laughs> but we know there's an above the law on the top of the deck. Okay. Can we deal with that? So we want to run R&D. This doesn't, oh, this does end the run, excuse me. So we can always draw, it's a one in 21 to hit the mad dash. We have to install the logic bomb and we have to run. This can fire and we can logic bomb one of these. We get the logic bomb down for sure, but I think we have to draw here. Again, I think all the agendas might be in R&D still. There's a fem. whoa, okay. So unfortunately we emerge in creativity out of fem. that's gonna be our whole turn. So I don't think we do that. I think we just do sure gamble logic bomb. We know they have the buff law in hand. We know they have the NGO front in hand. The question is, can we run the remote server? Probably. We have to check the rest of our guys too. How many wall-to-walls are out? Two. So there's one wall-to-wall -wall left in rotation. That could easily be above the law. If they score above the law, it's actually really bad for us. They double advice there. So that's either the NGO front or um, the above the law. I think we run it, right? This is three credits. This is three credits. This is one credit. We can give them money, I guess. I think we can afford to run this twice. The question is obviously, what is this ice? We can double click it once, and then if they border control, run it back. I'm worried that this is double border control, though. I don't think we can afford to run this three times. They also have a red planet couriers, though. So if they have biotic in hand, like they can just win. So like if they have a biotic red planet couriers and a five three, they just win. So this above the law only helps them win out if they win out with a hostile, which or uh, trickle light, which is pretty likely. Man, eight cards left, right? Like, and we know it. The hand has, I think, an NGO front. I think we know uh, too big to fail in a red planet. So we know most of HQ. So I don't love running HQ. We need to check if this is above the law. Well, we have to run first click, right? This is five strength. Bem's not going to deal with it well. Yeah, okay, that's, that's the nightmare. Okay, math. Okay, so we can break this for one credit. We can break this for one credit. Then we break this for three, and this is three. So it's three, six, seven, eight. Then we have to go back. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Then we have to go back. Uh, 16, 17, 18. Now we save three and we have logic bombs. So I think actually if we give them the credits, we can get through this. If it's anything else besides the above the law, uh, if it's uh, the above the law, we're okay. If it's anything else, we're in a bad spot. So we only break one of these. Again, we're gonna give them infinite credits, but they have red planet biotic money in hand. So having more money doesn't really matter. But they're gonna get a lot of money off of this, that's for sure. I don't think they're unpunitive. Yeah, so this is a really powerful ice. They can crack it at instant speed to end the run. And they can do that after we've broken all the ice on the server. So that's kind of the idea here. And we'll get a, we won't get a bow counter because this run won't be successful, but I think this is exactly how much money we have. At least we'll do this first and then see. Again, we have one extra click, so we can always like drop the no free lunch for three credits. So let's see if they border control here. There's a chance if it's a wall to wall, they just let us in. No, okay. So we have to run it back twice. So in theory, I think we do drop the no free lunch. It's the most credits we can get for a single card. And then we run back. 
Uh, we'll do the no free lunch last so they get less information. But I believe this is one, three, six, seven. Yeah, we'll be fine. I think. Pretty sure. So we break that one for one. Sorry, I don't think I've been highlighting the, the cards as well. I want to try and show all the cards that are standard only. This is Misfingo. You don't see it a lot, but it's really good into an endurance meta, right? It gets a lot of subroutines. And endurance only deals with two subroutines really well. And also if they do this, like they trash the remote server, which is, you know, not great for them. But it doesn't really matter if they're going to red planet biotic. Man, this is going to be such a big ruse. So we can go back. It's either we install the no free lunch and use the no free lunch or we logic bomb. I'd rather keep a logic bomb from running R&D. Oh, thinking also we could run it here. No, if we logic bomb, we end our turn. So we definitely don't do that. I wonder if it's right to crew for out the dream net instead for a card draw. I don't think so. So this is credit perfect. In theory, we could have logic bomb too. So we'll crack this for three. Oh man. Maybe we should have drawn once for a mad dash. It's the 118. If our top deck's a mad dash, we're gonna feel pretty silly. Uh three. Afshar, okay. That's a food. Okay, that was the game point there. So they still have an above the law in hand. Woo! Credit perfect. The remote server's not really good. Uh, that's probably the Afshar. If we run it first click, it doesn't matter. We lose two credits. That could be easily the above the law. Single advance, though. That looks like the NGO front. Yeah, if they score the above the law, it's like bad for us, but it's not game losing. All right, so we know the hand is probably above the law of 50 50. It's above the law, too big to fail. Um, Red Planet Couriers, and we're assuming that's the NGO front. It could be the above the law. And then they could win out with a hostile in hand, but we have to run first click. I think we're just going to try and run HQ. Yeah, that's fine. That fires. So, thinking probably our last, uh, last turn. So, what could we do here? Fortunately, we're credit short of doing emergent creativity. That's actually a reason I'm using the logic bomb is we could emergent creativity on FEM. That's still expensive though, and it will need three more credits. So we can always run HQ. Uh, we can let we can boat through the mouseless, and we can let the Akef fire, assuming that's the NGO front. Which I don't know if that's the NGO front. Maybe that is the above the law, because they realize they have a scoring window. Huh. I just don't know why they single advance the above the law. I guess for them it gets credits, but credits doesn't matter. I'm hoping they think it's the above the law. We could have boated through this. So we can do, uh, we're just like one credit short. We can do credit, credit, run. We uh, logic bomb this. We're one click short. We're one credit short. Oh no. Okay. What do we do? Again, say that they have two points in hand. That could be the last food, but I uh, think it would be really unlucky that we missed it on HQ. I think we consider running HQ. The problem is like we know two of the cards in HQ, assuming that there's not the bubble on there. But if we do that, we basically break this with boat and then we hit this with a logic bomb. So that's the food we lose. Again, there's no way to get through this, right? Like we logic bomb this, we boat this, and then we need three credits. So we're one credit short. We, our deck only has two no free lunches and we played both of them. So there's no top deck that gives us money on zero. Overclock, actually we could do cre draw credit overclock. And I think we still have three overclock on the list. So it's a one in six to draw an overclock. No. I think if anything, we career fair down the dream net, run HQ. And again, we, we both through this and then we double break the Aket. We see the top of R&D. I think that's the chance that wins. Again, assuming there's agendas in HQ. Unfortunately, we know, uh, I think two of the cards in HQ and assuming that's the NGO front, which could be in hand. I don't know why they push out the NGO front, but like, I'm so surprised by the install advance. Maybe it's so they can jam next turn. Actually, that makes sense. I think this is above the law. I don't think we go HQ this turn. We're going to assume that's above the law, which means we lose or always be running, which is, you know, a disaster. Or a logic bomb, actually. That's probably a bigger disaster. Oh, uh, we shouldn't have drawn, maybe. We should have considered it and ran R&D here. Because we can click through this. We can logic bomb this, and then we could draw that. So actually, I think the draw there could have cost us the game. Because if there's a gen on top of R&D, we're going to either lose the logic bomb or the always be running, and both of those are, like, very, very bad. Yikes. That's uh, no time for that. I think we just have to draw up into another logic bomb. Oh, that's ugly. Ugh. If that's above the law, we're going to be in a pretty bad spot. We should have tried to use this to this turn. Probably too late for this. Yeah, I think if we thought that through, we might have wanted to go R&D there. Because I do think this is above the law, so they can jam another. If it's an NGO front, at least we have a window. That's an NGO front. Wow. And then they just keep drawing. Maybe that's a food, but I think that's the NGO front. And so they just drew two unknown cards. I think we have to run HQ here. We run HQ th uh, through here. Uh, it's not very good for us. We can run here and bounce off of this. Again, we've seen the mouseless. The Colossus is kind of the bad one. 
We have to run first click. We could always run first click here. I think we just run our HQ, right? And then we double click through this and then we uh, mouseless. We endurance the mouseless. Yeah, I think that's a chance. Maybe we should have had two credits so we can run here. Okay, we got to play fast. They have to leave. So we'll boat through this. Um, we'll double click through this. Again, we pretty sure the bubs the laws in hand. They might just putting in this remote server because it's safer. And then they can score out from hand. Again, we know the NGO front. We know they're too big to fail. We know the uh, red planet. Top of the deck, hedge fund. Got it. Good game. Oh, it was in there. I'm pretty sure they would have jammed in the remote server, but apparently not. I think that's the NGO in there, which we did see, and they knew that we saw, so it kind of changes how um, how they play. Um, but yeah, we knew that was in there. We got the HQ pressure, but you see here, when all the sites, like it's still pretty difficult. You can get a runoff, spending your whole, your whole turn to get in though, but you see the value of just got getting endurance in here. If we didn't have endurance, this is the sort of matchup where just like playing ABR and trying to run archives to see the top kind of doesn't work out. But I think all the agendas might be in the bottom five, right? Assuming that's the NGO front. If it wasn't, like they could have red planet couriers to win out any other agenda. So that's not an agenda. Um, that means that there's three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So probably two agendas in the bottom five. One uh, atlas and one food. It's pretty wild. We got there. <laughs> we have to spend a lot of time thinking though, because you get one good run. Like you can't mess up a turn because your turn is one like, one good access. This is pretty wild. But you see the changes, and I think we had a bit more credits. We could like emerge down the fem, but we were being taxed out. To our runs actually were being taxed out, which is pretty meaningful. Let's get another one in. All right, we're playing standard. Uh, we're playing against acids at near Tub Broadcast Center. Um, this is one of the matchups where I actually probably don't want to play neutralize all threats, and we're more likely to want to play safety first, just because if they're playing a lot of acids, they're gonna have a lot of stuff that we have to trash on access, and that's pretty bad. If they're playing hard any news, we're not in control of our economy. I think we have one match recorded of this where we're playing against like controlling the message, and it's the same idea that we didn't want to play neutralize all threats. It's a bit of a bummer because our HQ pressure is like the early way in the early game to like get a credit differential, but. Yeah, we're going to try and not do that. Thanks, you too. So near Earth Hub, our opponent, first time they build a new remote server, they draw a card. So with 17 influence, a lot of times they'll build a lot of remote servers and not ice them and just use that card draw to spam more assets on the table. Our opening hand, um, we have no real good way to deal with the assets. They're not going to ice up centrals too well. Uh, they don't have that much ice usually. They do draw it a bit faster. They also do draw a bit aggressively, which means that HQ can flood up a bit better. So Jailbreak is the only really good card in this hand. We don't want to install the Unity. I haven't installed the Unity in any matchup so far. Earthrise and Daily Cast. Daily Cast is fine. Earthrise is a bit too expensive. And the problem with always be running is that we always have to be running. So hard hitting news, the standard tag punishment for having a credit differential if you run um, is kind of an issue. So we're going to try and get some more economy there. That's actually a much better hand, I think. We have a bit more burst economy. Hopefully we don't have to trash something. Well, we don't anymore. And we're playing safety first. So our hand size is only going to be three. We can never make that bigger. And if we end our turn with less cards in hand, uh, then um, our hand size, we're going to get a draw. So we want to dump our hand. So hopefully we like run R&D, probably jailbreak R&D or HQ. And then from there, sure, gamble, install the, the logic bomb. Uh, I don't know. We'll try and get cards out of our hand. So new remote, draw, draw. AR enhanced security is the nightmare if they get off the table. Now, I don't want to check these. It's a tiered subscription. Okay, well, <laughs> got to be running. They're going to get money off of that. If we access HQ here, we can steal a Bologna, but we have to run first click. I'm going to see HQ. We'll see a hard hitting news or something in here. Awful, right? So we draw a card. We'll see two. It's usually three if you're playing uh, the other one. What's it called? Neutralize all threats. Amani Sanai getting rezzed. That's fine. Top card of R&D. It's an AR enhanced. That's good to know. Again, there could be a spin doctor on our table. It's a Bologna. So if we pay five credits to steal the Bologna, we can't sure gamble. The Mani Sanai will return one of these to our hand, which, you know, it's not the worst. I think we just need to get every single credit, or we can just leave this to overclock back in, but the chance of us hitting it are pretty low. <sighs> I'm going to take it and be on game point. Return a card to hand. Mani Sanai says when agenda scored or stolen, there's a trace, and that's going to be five, so returns a card to hand. Luckily, these are not very expensive. They're safer in our hand. We have to worry about hard in the news, that's for sure. But this is a nightmare in theory. Like we have no good way to get credits on low credits. So we're just going to steal the AR enhanced security and then just. Okay, we're going to have no board state. Now they trash the find the truth. Um, we're just going to have no board state whatsoever. They're going to turn all our cards to our hand this turn. Well, luckily, our hand size is going to be huge. We're going to run R&D. We're going to try and win this turn. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Money doing work, huh? <laughs> we are on game point. Um, that's kind of what happens sometimes. Again, they draw mid-turn. Can we just win this click? 
If we find a balloon on the top of the deck, we can't do credit overclock into it. I don't know what server two is. It looks like a Rashida. It could be the winning agenda. So I'm going to check server two. And then I'm just going to put down a logic bomb or something. No, this is good. <laughs> I'm playing AVR. You need this. I think we're going to check server two because we've already ran. So we'll see if this is a uh, if this is a Bologna. We want to click for credit. We have to discard some cards here. Uh, Earthrise is not happening anytime soon. Sure, Gamble probably is not going to make it. I don't think we need the emergent creativity. An RNG key would be like one of the best things. I wonder if we get emergent creativity for RNG key with an open RD. It only matters if you have to find the truth. I think I run this again. Uh, we should hold on. Hold on. Do we click for credit to trash Rashida? Yeah, we do. We should click for credit. Yeah, we'll click for credit there first. It's a bit awkward. If it was a spin doctor, it would have rezzed. Okay, breach. It's a pad campaign. All right, so we discard some cards. So we're going to keep the overclock. It's the way that we can interact with, uh, with Bologna. Logic Bomb is good for some cheese. We're going to have to get her find the truth down and then see the top of R&D. We might get hard hitting news. Again, we didn't see much in there. Uh, always be running is the way that we deal with ice. Safety first is probably the least necessary here. And, and like funny enough, the sure gamble is probably the worst card here. Weird how that is. I think getting the RNG key down with emergent creativity is going to be like really key. Pun intended. They drew un two unknowns, three unknowns. There is a hard inning. Okay, they have it. So the question is whether they're on boom for tag punishment, but we now have four tags. Again, that was going to happen. But ideally, we can close the game out quickly. Now, we can run HQ. We'll see a single card. Not amazing. I do think we might need to get to two credits so we can emerge in creativity down a breaker. I think we run our, we'd rather see the top of R&D because if it's a Bologna, we win because we know there's not a spin doctor on the table. Their tag punishment, if it's boom, they need credit splatter word. Okay, so probably on boom. I think we just run HQ a couple times here. We can't install the find the truth because they'll just trash it. Actually, they don't have a lot of money. Oh, we just gave them a credit. So they can do predictive planogram into boom. We always want to have one credit so we can trash a boom if we see it. Boom, mind you, is a card that says if the runner has two tags, you spend two clicks to do seven meat damage, but it is a trashable operation. All right, their fun house is a pretty bad card in hand here. Just go back for another single. So we know if it's in there. Oh, it's in there. We need five credits. We could always overclock HQ and win one out of four times. I'm feeling good about those odds. I'd rather just get to three next turn and run HQ twice. They res their pad campaign. Okay, that puts them further away from the boom. They just drew a card. So what did we see at the top of the deck? And they click for two credits. So now boom is, oh, that's a bladder word, right? So I think we just click three, run HQ once. Tiered gives him a credit. We could die to... Oh, nice. <laughs> oof, oof. Good game. So there's two agendas in there. I'm assuming they're on boom, but like... So in this matchup, a lot of times the corporation won't ice up centrals really heavy because there's an understanding that if you step out of line, you get hard-hitting news. We were going to have to run, so we're just not going to respect it, and hopefully we can win the game sooner than that matters. Turns out, yeah, when you steal six points on turn one, you can kind of get there. In hand? Yeah. So that's going to happen. But uh, that is like, you know, what happens? I'm glad we didn't play neutralize all threats. Um, it actually would have helped, though. We would have seen a lot of cards. Where did we spend our money on the blown anyways? It wouldn't have mattered, but it's something that's hard to play. I, I, well, thanks for the game. Got him. <laughs> Got your end. All right. Now we're playing against sports. Uh, this is St. Uh, Saint Shaheen again. So same thing, except now we can get that HQ pressure. This is another matchup that in theory always be running is really good into because we have that early central pressure and we can use that early central pressure uh, to, you know, they don't ice up that well. Our opening hand's a bit awkward. We have a logic bomb, which is nice. The Femme Fatale is kind of dead, but once we draw into emergent creativity, we throw this away for an endurance. And Bezel is actually a really nice card in opening hands, right? Like we can always just about get it off turn one. And if we name Operation, especially after we see a couple cards in hand, that can do pretty well for us. I do think we're going to mulligan here for a jailbreak. I think that's one of our best openings. Uh, dirty laundry is really good too, because if we're going to spend our whole turn getting uh, two axes from HQ, we might as well get some money from it. It's also a nice card because when you play it, you go down to three credits and you're not forced to trash like a tranquility home grid. That's a luck. Have fun. All right, two cards on remote servers. Those could easily be um, tranquilities. Again, did they mull? Mulliganing into this is pretty hard. No, they kept. So we're going to run HQ, see the top of the deck. Spin doctor on the table is actually pretty common into um, Adam, who can see the top of R&D on a successful run. Top of R&D is a luminal. Okay, biotic. Vitruvius. Okay, this is pretty wild. Because if they draw here, they didn't. So now we know the top of the deck is a luminal. So this could be, again, like another really cheesy run. If they hit, res the spin doctor goes back to HQ. 
All right, we're technically on game point with Mad Dash. Classic Adam starting with an HQ interface and the ability to get through ice. Now we're gonna see, now they also gain two credits. I think we can consider overclocking these. I'm not sure what we're gonna need the money in this hand. We can run back for like a cheesy axis, but I think we wanna overclock one of these to keep a tranquility down. And then we can always like install the daily cast. I think we did enough this turn. Maybe we should just push it, but we wanna trash the tranquility here. I don't know what this is. It's a tranquility there. We're forced to trash it. Luckily, that's why we have this card. And then we'll install a cast for some money. Uh, don't actually need that much money in this matchup. A second tranquility is a bummer. But they, we can always bring that down. Biotic, they're just gonna go for it. And that means they're gonna leave centrals open. Tranquility to gain two, advance, advance, advance. Again, Sports Metal gains two credits or two cards when they score. They've got a Vitruvius. Now, in terms of the raw two pointers in this deck, a lot of them are out. That's really important. We also know nothing in hand. So let's run a hand. And I think we will uh, use our overclock for the mode server. Top of R&D is a hedge fund. Rashido have to trash it. Rashido going to trash it. So there's only one card in HQ. We don't know what it is. There's a hedge fund on top of the deck. I think we're going to run to check what that is. Let's draw once for dirty. Okay, Rejig doesn't do anything. Run HQ. So next. Doesn't matter on this board state. And we'll just bring this down. All right, so now we know they have a next and a hedge fund. So they're gonna have to spend a lot of their turn drawing, which means centrals are gonna to continue to be open usually. So we know the whole hand, unknown, unknown. They have nowhere to put agendas, right? So this is where the HQ pressure kind of hits. Okay, icing up R&D. So they probably don't have an agenda in HQ. Awkward thing here is if we hit the, the next, we have to trash it. Gotta run first click though. Not a lot of choices. We wanna draw a mad dash. I think we're on two in this list. Maybe we should be on three. It's a red level at the top. Have to trash it, sucks, hedge fund. All right, our economy's not amazing. Draw, that will play in a couple turns. We'll draw once more. Shit, we drew this. We never want to draw this. Ideally, we can still get a rejigged on the table if we return to hand, but we're going to need big economy to get that down. But that might be the only breaker we need. So ideally, we are going to be able to sure gamble in turn or two. I don't think we knew a lot about the hand. Red level hedge fund. Okay. So now two more unknown cards. Another unknown card. Another unknown card. HQ just wide open still. Let's go. With three credits, there's not a lot we're forced to trash. Spin Doctor, the food on top. Okay, we win. Well, it seems whether they draw or not. They drew. So now the, the, the what was it? The food is in hand. So we just run HQ three times. It's a, at least a one in six to win. Oh, okay, damn. All right, cool. Good game. <laughs> Two games in a row. Oh, Saint. Oh, that feels bad. But yeah, oh, with no ice, that's what happened. Yeah, with no ice to ice up, like that's the ABR Adam. And this is, I think, the experience that uh, Saru played at Worlds, uh, playing this sort of list into a field of a lot of sports medals. They can ice up very well quickly. And those early accesses can just kind of snowball. Once you get to game point by stealing four points, a single mad dash, and we should probably be on three, kind of closes it out. But um, yeah, that was two games in a row. We we're just hammering centrals and it works. And that's just our sort of archetype. And let me tell you, it's like, I don't know if I love it. It's a bit frustrating. Always be running, spending two clicks to break an, a card, a break a single subroutine, mind you, is like not good. It's actually far below rate compared to a lot of the other tricks in the game right now. Like looking at Endurance, Boomerang, Botulus, all that sort of stuff looks really good compared to always be running. But the difference is you start turn one with this, which means if you have really strong run events that you can play, and mind you, it has to be a run event. You can't play a program or a re resource that doesn't run, which is a bummer. Uh, you do get that early pressure. And like it feels more often than not you're cheesing games, but I do think you can cheese a couple games. I do think this list, this version has maybe a bigger late mid to late game. Again, playing things like an endurance. I think Asaru didn't want to play endurance. Um, that kind of gets you there. That, that, that actually gives you a mid to late game and you can run real breakers. The problem is the economy in this deck. And that's kind of what Adam looks like, I guess, after um, the banning of Rezeki and Pad Tap in the standard format. The economy can be pretty tricky to get through. But uh, that's the idea behind the deck. I like the changes we made. Uh, you do get that endurance down cheaply. Spend five influence as opposed to 10 for every other runner because you can get it with your uh, merchant creativity. But that's the idea. Thanks so much for watching. I'll always be running. And my very own directive, at the end of every video, I will read the names of every Sure Gamble and Degree Mill patron that helps support this channel. So huge shout outs to Scott Humphrey, Awesome Case, New Object, Daniel Cook, Francis Fortin, Ewan Milne, Andrew Robertson, Jossie Barron, Ken Owen, Chris, Jalen Horm, 222, Shane Lilly, Alec, Jeff Bennett, Nathan Hutner, Tim Ashton, Kat Shen, Spray, Andrew Jolly, PR Small, Jonky Bong, Joe T, Luke Dennis, Zane Shrev, Chris Watt, Artem Michalitsyn, Sauce, 
Phil Ulrich, Sven Bazan, Matt Conduit23, Izzy Stardust, Adam and Fish, Zach Cruz, I Feel Fine, Stefan Primal, Sebastian Colorado, Astrolad, Scott S, Dev Invincibility, Clement Marshall, Arthur Pitt, JC, Bookkeeper, Chris Mitchell, Elliot Mobby, Sebastian Coase, Jason Gessner, Lee Butler, Lucas, Sean Devlin, Jenny, Spooky Noises, Acarium, Taekwon Dean, Nathan Durant, Encoder, Levi Corner, Matthew Shanuel, Kroor, Jay Verrill, Dan Lewis, Henny Habisha, and Dan Bouchard. Thanks so much for supporting myself on the channel, let alone a huge thanks, of course, to all our daily cast patrons. Your support is immensely appreciated. And that's this video again, back from Worlds. I think always be running will do it. It's so sad again, it's Adam's last worlds and that makes me feel things. Enjoy the recommended content. We'll be back in a bit. Ciao.